Okay, good evening. The Design Review Board meeting for Design Review Board number two of April 12th, 2012 is called to order. Please refrain from talking amongst yourselves and please turn off or put on vibrate all cell phones and pagers. If you need to talk, please leave the meeting room. Anyone who wishes to speak, including applicants, is asked to completely fill out one of the speaker cards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff. You will be called to present a case or speak on a specific item as desired. Anyone who wishes to be re-noticed about a case must completely fill out one of the postcards provided at the table by the front door and submit it to staff uh, to receive notice of subsequent meetings, that is. Current Design Review Board agendas are available by calling our Design Review Board hotline at area code 818-548-3171 or by visiting our website at www.ci.glendale.ca.us. A handout describing the procedures of the meeting, possible board decisions, and Design Review Board reconsideration and appeals is available at the table by the front door. Please note that appeals must be filed within 15 calendar days of the Design Review Board decision date. The chairperson may reorder agenda items at his or her discretion. However, this evening, our chairperson is absent, and so we will need to elect a chair pro tem. Is there a nomination for the chair pro tem? Uh, I nominate Ms. Uh, April. Uh, is there a second? No, second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 So, if you don't mind... Um, at this point in time, I would like to do roll call. Roll call, board member Garagos? Here. Board member Karoglian? Here. Uh, Chairperson Malikian is not present. Uh, board member Zarifian is not present. And uh, Chair Pro Tem Sakai? Here. Report regarding posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted on the bulletin board outside City Hall at or before 5 p.m. on April 3rd, 2012. Oral communications. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. I have no oral communication cards. I have none. None present. Um, which brings us to staff announcements. I have none, and I don't believe we have any from Stephanie Reich. So we do have four items on tonight's agenda. I'd like to turn the meeting over to Chairperson Sakai. Thank you. Uh, I have a question on... Um 2024 Bellar Drive, we are hearing that case tonight? Yes, you are. Can I reorder that to be second? To be second? The second case per... Um, at this point in time, I don't see the applicant in the audience, so uh, let me do this. Um, if you don't mind going ahead with the first item sure. on tonight's agenda, I will make a phone call and see if they are available and if they're in the audience by the time the second right. item rolls around. If, if sure not, can. obviously, last is fine. <laughs> I just figured I'd move it again uh, ahead of the other two cases on the agenda they have the same market to applicant. So uh, we'll start off with the 2PDR NRAF, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Kai, okay. board members. The first case for tonight is 2PDR NRAF 123371, located at 3718 Ford Avenue. This is a first time summit for final review. The proposal is to construct a an approximately 1,500 square foot two-story house with an attached two-car garage at the front, an existing substandard lot of 3,748 square foot. There was a variance granted on December 19, 2011 to construct the house on the substandard lot, which is less than 5,000 square feet. This project is exempt from CEQA and is located in the R2 zone. The site planning, in terms of site planning and overall design and massing, staff believes that the proposed site planning works well with the existing site, which is essentially flat, and the newly proposed driveway will uh, provide vehicular as well as pedestrian access to the house. House has been designed with well articulations at the front, sides, and the rear, and combination of different materials have been used to emphasize the uh, breakup in the massing. And staff supports the project with two recommended conditions. One is to provide larger columns at the rear for the trellis, and uh, two, which already ha a new landscape plan has been provided today, but the one of the conditions was to provide a more thoroughly designed landscape plan, and I will let the board review that if it's not 
thorough enough, we can request another one before the issuance of building permit. So that concludes my very brief presentation. If you have questions, I'm available. The applicant is also here in the audience. I have just a funny little question, sure. just for all the nerds out in the audience. What is that letter or the uh, case number? What's going on with the case oh, number? Oh, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's the new new numbering system that the computer assigns. Okay. Um, so you have to get used to it. <laughs> it's like that's a really long number. Um, you said you have, you have a new landscape plan? That yes, what you see on the board is the newest one. You, what you received in the packet did not include the legend or the ah, right. uh, proposed plans, so we asked for one. But uh, if the board feels it's still not thorough enough, we can, as this is condition number one, one states, today. we can come again. Mm -hmm. This is the current one that came today. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, I had a question on the 18-inch high stucco wall note on the landscape plan. Mm -hmm. I don't understand that. It doesn't look. I, it's hard to see on the uh, rendering as well what the 18-inch. It has stone pilasters. Are those the stone pilasters at the end? It's not just. I mean, it's a wall with end pilasters. Is that what the note is referring to? Oh, what that is is a uh, because the code does not allow anything over 18 inches in the front setback. They're making sure that is not more than 18 inches. And then the ends are the stone pilasters that they're referring to. Is that yes. Okay. And uh, the uh, photographic survey that you have right now in mm -hmm. front of you, there have been within. 300 feet of radius, all the homes have been photographed, but the survey was done only for the linear footage of 300 feet from the house. So you will see more pictures than you will see the, the chart for. So don't be thrown off by that. Okay. Um, I, have, okay I have one card uh, from Kendall Hales. Oh, it's only open the discussion for <laughs> public hearing. Can you please state your name and address? My name is Kendall Hales um, at uh, 2852 Foothill Boulevard in La Crescenta. Um, I'm the applicant, uh, owner applicant for this project. Board members, how are you doing? Mr. Garros. Um, uh, in designing this project, I've, I've actually built another home uh, a few years ago on the same street, and, and I knew that there was a certain style that would work in this neighborhood with the other homes in that area, and so we decided to design a home that was more of a craftsman style. Um, home, and I met twice um, with uh, Ms. Reich and with um, Mr. Nazarian um, in their design studio. Um, the first design we had, um, the second story offset was not was less than three feet. It was about two feet, and so um, Ms. Reich suggested that we offset that a little more. And that's the second story where you see those two bedrooms up on top. They're offset, so we pushed that back to a three-foot offset, which actually gives it a little more depth, and actually took the extra foot and overhang, pushed the um, house on the second story back that overhangs the first story in the, in the rear to break up that elevation. Um, naturally, when we dig the footings, we're going to come up with all sorts of rocks, and we'll use those um, for the pilasters and the, and the wainscoting, which will, be, which will work well in that neighborhood since there are a lot of rock walls and, and homes with footings and foundations out of that rock, so that'll be nice. Um, we used a lower pitch roof, uh, which worked with that style and allows uh, for views of any neighboring homes. And the homes directly across the street are actually elevated off of the street, um, so views are really not blocked um, very much at all. Um, and that's, that's it. We uh, felt like this was a good design for the neighborhood, a small home that, that worked well with, with what we had going on with our neighbors. and and other neighboring uh, homes. And with respect to the landscape plan, I've used Judy Palmer in the pa past um, on, on doing my landscape plans, and I, I think she did a great job with that. And I, and I, I usually let her have free reign. Um, I don't really guide her much because uh, I, she always uh, comes up with great stuff. So thank you. Any questions for the applicant? No? OK, thanks. That's the only card I have, so we will close the public discussion. Who wants to go first? Um, I think it's well done. I think it's a tight lot, and I think it has a lot of detail to it. I think it's really nice. When you look at the homes in the neighborhood, I think it uh, will really step up uh, the kind of stuff that's done in the neighborhood. I think it's uh, well designed and well detailed. So, support of it. I'm in support of it. No complaints. 
Okay. I, I think this is a really well done package. It's a, it's kind of like your perfect example of a, of a, just you know you don't have to have a lot of a lot of information, a lot of plans, a lot of, a lot of uh, to do about something. You just draw it up, design a nice project, get the information on that we need to see, and you know it's it's very clear and uh, consistent and well put together. So even though it's a very light package, I think this is a perfect example for someone who wants to do a house, so you don't have to go through a whole lot of <laughs> effort, <laughs> and uh, it's done really well. So I also f support your project. So. Um, I think that the and, conditions uh, that staff had were the landscape plan, which landscape you got provided. Plan, and which and got provided, and the uh, rear column. And the providing rear larger columns. Are yeah. we all in favor of the that? Rear columns. Columns. I think that's appropriate to tap okay. that a little larger. All right, so with that, do we have a motion? Okay, I'll make a motion to approve with the uh, staff uh, recommendations for whatever that new case number is. Those crazy, all those letters and numbers. Okay, second. Where would want a second? I'll second. All right, this is a roll call. Mr. Kerogolian? Yes. yes. Mr. Gergos? Yes. And Madam Chair Pro Tem Sokai? Yes. Thank you. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. okay. So we will just go on to the second case, which is 1897 Starville Road, 2PDR 2011. We don't have our case planner here. Or Actually, we do. And um, unfortunately, I'd like to make an announcement that case planner Chris Baxter is out ill today. So Ms. Stephanie Wright will be ah. giving the presentation. Fantastic. Okay. Good evening, Chair, board members. Um, there are two cases that have some similarity. Uh, and uh, thank you, Mr. Nazarian, for uh, moving board so we can see both together. Uh, 1897 is in front of you on the right hand side. Uh, 1899 is in front of you on the left. We'll be reviewing 1897 first. So this project will replace an existing 2,641 square foot single story house. It'll be a new two story 5,632 square foot house with patio terraces. There are oak trees, three oak trees located on the site on the east side of the house. Two oak trees are within 20 feet of the site east of the driveway. The urban forester has reviewed these trees and has commented that the tree protected zone needs to be maintained. If that changes uh, in plan check or in permitting, uh, they will need to review it again. Uh, there is a neighborhood comparison survey included in your report, as it is with um, all the other uh, single family residence reports. I want to call your attention to something that we were notified about a couple of days ago. On house size, the range that we have is 2907 to 5613, and that was obtained from the county assessor's office. In checking the building plan records for that, uh, that house on the high side, we found that's 4492 instead of 5613. So we wanted to make that correction. So the project site is located on a flag lot approximately 200 feet from Starvale Road via private drive. Two other properties, including the 1899 on view this evening, share that same driveway. The new two-story house, three-car garage, and usable open space patio terraces will be constructed on an existing pad to avoid building on the slopes or modifying existing retaining walls. Any work on or around the existing walls and or grading drainage, grade changes, and piled soil around the indigenous trees will require additional review by the urban forester. So no substantial grading is proposed that would alter the pad's landform, nor are there proposed changes to the existing two-foot and seven-foot high retaining walls located to the east and the south. However, the cantilever deck may impact the privacy of the downslope neighbor's pool and backyard patio areas. A condition has been added to remove the proposed retaining walls 
and cantilever for these decks so that the terrace development will not project beyond the edge of the existing pad, and that is to reduce any potential privacy impacts on the downslope neighbor. Regarding mass and scale, houses in this neighborhood were constructed primarily in the 1960s, though there are a couple of remodeled and newer houses constructed later. They share a common predominant development pattern and massing configuration of single-story low-profile horizontal designs. Houses upslope on Starville Road were constructed primarily in the 80s, and their designs and floor areas are primarily two and three stories with a variety of configurations. When we view the house and the story poles, uh, the site itself, we see that it will be seen from below in the context of these larger 1980s homes. And we do have some photographs of that of that site condition if you look over to the right hand side on the lower right uh, we have uh, photographs that staff has put together from our site visit showing the site with the story poles and the houses around. Overall the articulated and terraced building form including the roof configuration appears consistent with the intent of the guidelines recommending hillside building set back and following the topography. At the north side, the project appears to be glazed two-story volume bracketed by smaller solid volumes. The east side of the house is simple with bedrooms above the garage set back and simply designed elevations. The south elevation, however, while simply designed, appears somewhat monumental as does the entry at the north. The south side of the building is broken into three two-story volumes breaking up the mass, although the forms do still have a monumentality. The west elevation, staff believes, is unnecessarily complicated with a series of forms that have little relationship to one another. In any case, the project is significantly set back on the east, south, and west from the edge of the pad due the, to the significant second floor step backs on the east and west sides of the building. Uh, staff believes the massing will appear appropriate. Nevertheless, a step back may be considered on the south side for similar offsets. Conditions are recommended to break up the vertical two-story entry at the east and to simplify the west elevations, design, and materials. As for design and detailing, the quality of design and detailing, such as windows, doors, materials, and finishes, enhance the overall architectural design. However, the use of the white cement plaster for the building may not be appropriate for its hillside location, and the board may want to recommend colors that better fit into the hillside. So staff does have a few recommendations, um, six uh, comments rec for recommendation and reconsideration. Uh, the first one is in regards to the protected trees. Uh, number two, regarding the cantilevered patio terraces to pull those back to protect privacy for the downsloping neighbor. Uh, and number three is also consider redesigning or screening that patio on the west side to prevent, prevent potential intrusion of privacy on that downsloping neighbor. Number four, uh, reconsider the two-story entryway to reduce its height and monumentality. You may want to also include in that break down the design on the south side uh, while maintaining its simplicity. Uh, number five, simplify the west elevation change of plane and uses of materials. And six, use colors that blend with the hillsides as an alternative to the proposed white plaster. And there are colors to consider. That concludes staff reports, and we're here to respond to any questions you may have. Um, was there a story poll plan submitted? Uh, I believe there was a story poll plan. I'll check for it. The only reason I ask is I think and I'm presupposing what neighbors might think, or at least our discussion. Um, they might have been emphasizing areas, you know, that aren't Somebody might think that the story pole is actually happening out further when it's actually a, a, a mass that's happening behind something, you know, in terms of what was uh, being defined. The, I, oh, I do know that uh, Chris Baxter checked the story poles on the site. 
and check oh, no, them. Not that they're incorrect. What I'm saying is it's they didn't put a story pole on every corner. I mean, every fenestration, you know, movement of the building. I see what you mean. I'm just wondering what the volume that is shown by the. There might be something in front that might minimize the impact of the larger facade. Look, it, it um, might take me a few point. minutes to, okay. to locate sure. those in the file. Typically, okay. we do have those for a complete okay. package. I have a question, just out of curiosity. Is there any uh, site wall designed for the north, or I guess it's the the the, the, the Property line between 1897 and 1899 Starvale, or is it just landscaping that was going to divide the two properties? I'm not sure we have that in our package. That uh, that question may be best uh, yeah. turned to the applicant. Okay. More questions for staff? Okay. So I'll open the public hearing, and let's go with <laughs> Baco Marcosi. Please come up and state your name and address. Uh, good evening. My name is Sako Marcusi. I'm the project architect with Allergy Marcusi Architects. We're located at 320 Arden Avenue, Suite 120 in Glendale, California. Um, I guess the staff uh, pretty much uh, um, described the project uh, in terms of uh, how, how we approached it. It's basically, uh, uh, you know, the way that I approach this in terms of design is a uh, series of um, uh, cubes that are interlocking and uh, at where they intersect, uh, either there's a change of uh, uh, change of uh, material or change of color. And uh, fenestration is uh, put, uh, put in a, such a way that uh, at the same, same time that it's functional, it also helps uh, to break down the facades and create some sort of a overall uh, um, uh, composition to what we're trying to do. Um, in addition to the rectangular or, or cubical volumes that we have, we have large uh, horizontal uh, canopy projections uh, that, uh, you know, will cast, you know, long and Full shadows on almost on all sides uh, of of the of the house, where you get morning, uh, midday, or afternoon sun. Uh, so that shadow, the effect of shadow on light itself, will really, in addition to the articulation of the elements that we have, which is stepping back, the second story, really helps uh, to uh, to soften the overall impact of of the house, even though it's only. Uh, 21 foot to the top of the roof and 24 feet to the to the top of the, the parapets, and um, and also in addition to that, uh, we have large areas of glass facing south. That's the primarily that's the main view where you know uh, you have the view of the downtown Glendale and LA, and uh, that glass itself during different times of the day will react differently to the to the environment in terms of you know the light and the way the sun is shining. So it, that itself will also create additional depth to what we have in terms of a, a, a building. Uh, so uh, that's the approach to the design. Um, I think one of the staff, uh, I mean the board members question about the story poles. Uh, a couple of the neighbors also asked about, you know, story poles, we have these huge horizontal canopies which are shading devices. and. Uh, the poles, some of them, uh, actually, we have to uh, uh, show the, the projections. The only way to, we cannot put something horizontal to go out, but we have to put a post and string uh, a line or something to show the extent of, of these horizontal elements. In reality, that's what it is. It's just a canopy. They're not volumes. They're not mass that are, that are sitting right on the edge. So it's it's... Uh, your question, it, mu it might be, if you That was exactly it. my point. And again, not in support or, or denial of the right. project, is so people understood the volume. Yes, that's, that's what it is. Um, uh, in terms of materials, as we're using uh, a steel trial plaster, uh, high quality metal uh, fascia, uh, stone cladding at some parts of the, and also uh, 
composition wood panels. Uh, our fenestration is primarily uh, dual glaze with low E argon field for uh, high efficiency and um, our uh, frame and sash is uh, powder coat finish uh, um, uh, aluminum on the outside uh, with uh, wood finish on the inside. Have you designed the west north elevation? Um, is there a, like a wall or some kind of divider between that oh, property? Oh, between and the, the properties? Between the properties? No, actually, uh, we have foreseen in the future if they sell this, we have designed in such a way if somebody wants to put up a wall there, they could. But right now, there are two brothers that will be living uh, in these two homes, so they don't want a wall between them. So. In the future, if they don't get along, they probably put up a wall. <laughs> but right now, they don't want a wall. Okay. Yes. Any other questions for the questions. applicant? Yeah, for you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. We okay, have a card for Worm. Artek Dovlatyan. Could you please state your name and address for the record? My name is Artek Dovlatyan. I'm at 213 North Orange, Suite A, Glendale, California, 91203. Uh, I'm here on behalf of the ownership. Uh, just want to thank the staff for working with us and spending the time and energy required to make the project happen. Uh, I've worked with the ownership several countless hours, designing, redesigning, working with the architects, working with staff, trying to get something uh, that fits the neighborhood, fits the area, and fits the needs of the ownership. Uh, with that said, we've um, met with the neighbors. We had a meeting prior to uh, today, and uh, we invited everyone in the neighborhood to come on by and take a look at the project, answer questions, and uh, just overall explain the project to them so uh, everybody has a better understanding and better feel of the project. Uh, we've also went to the neighbors, and we received some support letters, which I would like to give to staff so for the record. Thank you. Uh, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, I'm here. Hopefully, I'll be able to answer did, all your questions. Did the neighbors uh, that adjoin the property come to your sessions? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, there's actually one neighbor that's directly adjacent to it because it's a three parcel pad. It's a private property, uh, it's a private street that is shared by three, three properties, two of which we are here today. And the third uh, did come. And also uh, a few other neighbors immediately adjoining the property did show up. And then on the dais, we left a uh, communication from Silva Gasparian at 1818 Cielito Drive. She's downslope from the property. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, next, I have Art Devine. Devine? Please come up and state your name and address for the record. Good evening or afternoon, board members. My name is Art Devine. I'm a neighbor at 604 the Nova Scotia Road, and that's located directly below the subject property. Uh, you cannot see the subject property from my site. It's totally above it and out of sight. However, I am concerned about a couple of things. First of all, I want to state that I am in full support 100% of the project. I think it's a beautiful building. I think uh, the architect is great. In fact, it's the same architect that designed our house, and uh, we have great respect for him. So uh, we did go to the meeting. The neighbors were there. And when we saw these same drawings on the wall, it looked fantastic. And up until the time the story polls went up is when I uh, decided that I needed to bring something to the board's attention. <coughs> the problem that I have and some of the other neighbors is with the east elevation uh, which is a second drawing down from the, uh, the top. And uh, our belief is that that is a, uh, well, I think it, as the staff said, monumental in terms of the rest of the building. If you notice the south, west, and north elevations, they're well articulated. They have steps and whatnot. When you're looking at the east elevation, it appears to me uh, as a big box sitting on top of the hill. Uh, I took a photograph, and I'd like to share it with the, the board members on the story polls, uh, which I didn't realize the second house is also... I'm just speaking to the microphone, sorry. 
Uh, I didn't realize that the second house is also going to be seen. This was taken from Greenbrier Road, which is a road right below that. I don't know if any of the commissioners had an opportunity to drive up there or look at the surrounding properties, but to me, a layperson, it looked pretty imposing as compared to the other views in the uh, story polls from C. Lito, where they weren't as, uh, I would say, visible or imposing. So my goal to be here today is really twofold. One is to draw your attention to the concern about the east elevation and ask, first of all, hopefully you've all taken a look at it in person and ask that you'll look at it in your deliberations and see whether or not something needs to be done with it. I was kind of uh, interested because staff in their report indicated, uh, used the term monumental with the south and I believe the north elevations and said the east was fine, but again to a layperson, the south and north elevations to me look great. They're not, they're uh, stepped and articulated, whereas the east one appears to be in my opinion, monumental. The second thing I want to bring up, and staff has mentioned that, that if you base the compatibility in the neighborhood on the floor area, uh, the numbers they gave staff or they gave the board are incorrect and it skews the floor area, the average floor area uh, of the uh, surrounding houses. And <coughs> the staff mentioned the largest house in this surrounding neighborhood was only 4492 square feet instead of the 5613. So it, to me, that presents a size issue. And with that, I thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. No questions. Okay. Um, Anna Killian. And please state your name and address for the record. My name is Anna Akilian. I live on Starvale, 1930 Starvale. Across from that house, it's almost three houses between my house and that house. First of all, I want to mention that the young man, the way he mentioned that they had a meeting and they talked to all the neighbors, that's not true. I'm home 24 hours. No one knocked at my door except the letter that I received from the city. No one asked me any to to participate in any meetings. There were no meetings. They were collecting signatures, and those signatures that they were collecting, it wasn't the houses that were located close to the address that you're showing on your wall. They were all above this. They, they weren't even probably on Starwell. They, they were on Ridgely or Ridgeway, the street up there, that those neighbors don't have anything with this property. But from my bedroom, I, when we bought the house 18 years ago, I had a beautiful view. The view was like, I'm not saying 180%, it was maybe 90% view that I had from my bedroom, and I had a huge bedroom. I almost lived there because I'm a very sick person. I don't go downstairs. And I sit in my balcony and I enjoy the view. Now when I'm watching all these flags that they put there, I'm going to face the top of their wall and their roof and half of my view will be gone. Through the, above their view, I'll have a far distance view of the downtown. But I want to know that there were no meetings and I haven't participated, no one knocked on my door, no one asked me to do something, and I don't know. It's up to you now to decide. If you want to see how they're blocking my view, you should send someone and you can see that completely, how they're going to block my view. I believe back in 1960s when they were building those homes on one floor, they know they don't want to close each other's views. Even if you go up the Starvale, you'll see the homes are built so they won't block each other's views. So this is something new. I mean, if they're going to block my view, I'm sorry, I'm against it. Are you able to find your house on this aerial photograph that's up there? No. You are, you are, are you on this aerial photograph? I don't know. In between me, I'm across from them. If you'll give me the photograph, I'll show you where is my house. Okay, where this are is they? the driveway up to the two houses right here. This is the star veil, yes? Right. Yeah, there's mm -hmm. a big turn. And this is their site. I am right this here. Is this site. Their site is right here. I know, but when okay. they put the flags, the flags are here. Yeah. And my bedroom, my house is not showing here, but my house is right here. The third house, when you make left, 
from Sierra Leone. Once you turned, if you made the right after that, you're on that Yes. You might be this driveway right here, that driveway? You might um, be right there? No, there are two houses between me and him, and here it's an uh, empty space. You're sure it's not this direction? No, it's this down. direction okay. I know perfectly It's one of these well. houses then, possibly, right here? No, I'm here. You're I'm on the on other side, side of the street. Okay. And when I'm sitting in my balcony, I right. can see absolutely nothing toward Glendale or toward... Uh, because of the, the house. Over the um, roof, I can see the far mm -hmm. distance of... But when I bought the house, I bought it for the view. I didn't buy it. I didn't know what the... Well, just to clarify, we weren't looking with the camera. <laughs> um, it appears that this is a knoll. It not appears, it is a knoll. This is sloping down, so you're coming up. And you're, I'm right you're, there. My right, house right in here. is not right showing here. there. There are right three homes right, there. Right. right across from that house, the second house, yeah. it's my right, house. Right house right here. Yeah. Yes. So it wouldn't seem like that would be so much in your view angle. No, it will. When I'm like you, when I'm watching... You can go back <laughs> yeah. You can go to talk. You can talk into the mic. Actually, we have it oh, okay. on much better. <laughs> so, I can't see smart it. panel. Um, so, this is essentially 1897. Sorry, since we're not... So... Calibrated. So, this is 1897. And then. That means hers is up higher. Your house is where? Yeah. It's and up and off your the house is, I'm sorry. 1930. So, in regards to. She's up the. Office right screen. there, probably. Yeah, that roof is my house. Oh, maybe. you'd have to make the. Okay. Yeah. So, essentially, it's. Higher up than that. So Not that high. There are only three homes yeah. in between, two homes in between me and them. Okay. Thank you. Across the street. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, that's all the cards I have. So I'm going to close the public discussion. And who wants to start? Thank you. Okay, I'll start now first. <laughs> Um, in general, I think I'm supportive of the project. Uh, I think there are some issues, like the neighbor had mentioned, and uh, I think they could be dealt with uh, simply enough. What um, it is kind of uh, interesting uh, with the contemporary style, uh, a lot of it has to do with um, the collection of spaces and volumes. There's not there's not a formal language uh, essentially, so that you sort of have to take it case by case. And the interesting thing that the the neighbor had mentioned uh, is that sometimes you think you want to add interest by moving in and out and lots of uh, lots of differentiation. Um, we haven't got to the other project yet, but um, I think what's interesting about the other project from an architectural standpoint is it seems like a stronger form and a stronger shape and a stronger, stronger volume. And I think this one, in my mind, suffers a little bit from trying to always make everything differentiate. And I think it sort of loses a little bit of a sense of, of the form of what it's doing. But um, I can see that's, in that way, I guess that's the ethos of the house. That's the style of the house. Um, I do think there is some issues with that east facade. I think as a standalone, you know, if that was on a, not on a hillside and it was uh, in an urban or more of a suburban context, you know, with more homes, flat loft, I could see the, the interest of that in terms of compositionally, how that lighter surface worked against the darker and how the how the windows work. So I think that would be an interesting facade. But I think in this particular case, I think it it, it overemphasizes because of its position, the, the massness of it. And it be, that's the funny thing about this location. Um, it, it, the house is set back from many sides, so you don't have the sense of it pushing over the side so much, which I think is in its favor. This is one part of the house which actually is a um, not an important side of the house. It's the side of the garage at most, I mean, it's leftover. But unfortunately, where it's located and how it projects onto the hill, if somebody didn't know that that was a side of the garage, you would think, oh, wow, they put this big house over to the edge and didn't put any windows on it. <laughs> you know, so you'd, you'd wonder what the reason for that, that portion of the building would be. I think, um, so consequently, I think part of that could be handled with landscape, and I, was, I would defer to Miss Atai to, to look at the plant material and see if, she would, if you think the screening would be what happened with the materials that were specified. Um, my preference would actually be to not use a white plaster in that location. I, I, like I said, I understand 
conceptually as you look at the elevation isolated how that works but I think its actual position on the hill is a different story I think it really just it needs something else I think it's also it would be unfortunate if it was darker because I understand what you're trying to do but I think its position has to be dealt with in some way you know toned down in some way but in general I support of the project I like the fact that it's low I think people have to understand that um, buildings take up space so you will see them <laughs> especially on the hillside so that's just a matter of happening I do I would just say for staff I I think it's important on projects like this where the story polls are really people's understanding of, of and I think they're great I think story polls are important um, but if 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 you saw how the story poll plan was submitted you would understand what those corners were sort of like the architect was talking about I mean he had to put volumes out where the cantilever was but it really is a cantilever not the volume of the building or in some cases maybe on this building you might have done the story pull where the main volume was but there might be something lower in front of it that you didn't have to do a story pull on which might minimize the impact of a two-story facade so um, I think it would be helpful since it I think the story pull would come in plan would come before the packages go out so I think if I would re request that if it could be part of the packages, especially on a project like this where the story polls are so important. Um, and again, that's in support or not of the project, just so people understood it, you know, and not try to do it quickly at the at the meeting at the hearing right now. So uh, I will move along, and we can discuss it as we go further. Okay. Oops. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Although I do have a little concern about uh, the white plaster, uh, that may be a matter of taste in my part here, uh, and I do agree with the staff's recommendation, item number six, where it says uh, other colors, tan, brown, green, whatever else, uh, should be taken into consideration to uh, blend better with the hillside. Maybe I should have asked this question earlier when the architect or the gentleman was here. Uh, when you had a meeting, and my position is always uh, to take into consideration the neighborhoods, uh, the local population, the local homeowners' concerns into uh, uh, into serious consideration. And that is why when the gentleman said that you had a meeting or he had a meeting or the homeowner had meetings with the neighbors there, would it be possible to know what was discussed and what the neighbors' concerns were and were those concerns addressed at those meetings? If the chair would. Um, you don't have to reopen the meeting to have the applicant come up and answer a question. Okay. Let's have the applicant come up, answer the question. Um, yes, again, my name is Sako Marcusi, the project architect. We had two uh, presentation boards hanging on a wall in one of the homes, the middle. Um, actually, the, the, this just same house, which is there right now. And, um, uh, you know, neighbors, the ones that they came in, they looked at the project, and if they had questions in general, they were answered. Uh, some of them had concerns, and we had to go, actually, we had to go out uh, to show them where the limits of uh, or let's say the backyard or, or the uh, fenestration uh, would be one of the neighbors actually went to her home to see uh, if any of her backyard views were blocked by our backyard and those were concerns that were, were answered. Um, uh, the other neighbor had a concern about uh, uh, Mr. Uh, um, I think they were the Gasparians. They had a concern. We talked over the phone a couple of times. They had a concern that the sloughing that was happening along the, uh, the, the face of the slope was actually filling up behind the, the retaining wall and all this debris was coming down. And that's, that's a concern that we could address during the construction. We could have it all cleaned out. And once it is planted, I, I think that would be remedied, that problem. The other concern that she had was her privacy, the pool, you know, which is sitting directly west of us, but some maybe I'd say 50 feet or 60 feet below our pad. And I don't know how we can address that because no matter, let's say even 
the houses right now, the way they're sitting, if somebody comes to the edge of the property and looks over, they can see their pool. Is, uh, staff suggested a maybe a wall or some sort of a, a, a I don't know, screening at that west side, but why would you put a wall where you have, if you're sitting in, in a house in the patio and you're looking straight out, you see the horizon, which is the, the, you know, the downtown uh, Glendale and LA, and, but that wall will be basically blocking that view, which is whoever comes to the house will ask, why did you put that wall up? I mean, it's, I don't think, I think, you know, sometimes neighbors are overly concerned because I don't think somebody who lives there, I live on a hillside, and uh, I enjoy my view, but I don't go constantly at the edges and looking at people's backyards. I mean, that's not, uh, it's, it's a concern. Everybody has that concern, but I, I don't think physically we could solve that. It's a matter of behavior and the way people behave and how they use their property. Uh, some of these, uh, uh, the east elevation, definitely we could do with some plant screening. We do have a landscape plan. If the shrubbery that is presented there is, if it's not a high growth, we could probably go to something that grows taller because we don't have any view from the garage. So that, actually that mass could be screened. The other um, option that we have is we could actually go back with the staff and maybe tone down the color of the stock or go more of an earth tone I don't know if we can get that contrast that I'm trying to achieve, but because I already have a very dark element, which is the wood. So uh, if I try to uh, make the stucco too dark, it would sort of blend in and it, these volumes would be lost. So that's, that's my concern. And I, I, breaking up everything that, else, just break up that facade too. <laughs> <laughs> You're changing everything, just well, actually, that one too. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned, uh, my original design, it's a lot stronger design which actually that's, and I have, but staff's recommendation was to, to tone it down. I, you know, these. Uh, and I'm just saying it's not my yeah. preference, but I'm saying you've done it everywhere else, so yeah. <laughs> why not do it there? Yeah. No, but I, my preference would have been what I had originally designed, which was a little bit different. Uh, but based on our meetings with the staff, we toned it down, as they say, so we toned it down. Uh, if we have lost that oomph, which is what I was trying to get to. I mean, uh, these but the, the problem I think there is that you know it, you're trying for that dramatic contrast right. on the most uninteresting part of the house, in the spot where it's most visible, and that's why it's okay. that's why it doesn't seem. I appreciate what you're trying to do, but you're doing it in the wrong spot. Okay. You know, I mean, it, what you want to do there is not helping. You know, that's not the spot. So. And I hope I have answered your question, yes. Mr. Crowley. Yes, thank you. Any other questions? No. I wonder from staff, is there a material board that was submitted for this project? Mm -hmm. Might help yeah. with the colors. Did you have anything else to add to your no. comments? No. Wrong board. Wrong oh. board. Okay. <laughs> Probably the same. Similar. It is, yeah. Yeah. So this this one's got a slightly lighter wood and a lighter stone. Actually, it'd be good to see them together <laughs> if we could, of course. <laughs> since they will be neighboring properties. Um, in general, I, I favor the project. I think it's a stunning site, and you know, you, with stunning sites, you come, you want that stunning house, and of course, you pay a lot for the for the view, so you want to be able to enjoy it from every aspect that you can. So. I think the, the approach of putting the glazing on the south, the, the view side, and then trying to uh, screen it back by doing the, the large overhanging eaves is a good approach. You're not, you're not overly emphasizing the volumes by putting them out there in front. You're kind of taking them back. I think um, staff's recommendation to bring the colors more into the naturalistic hillside uh, tones uh, maybe could be achieved through um, the stone, the limestone that you're proposing, on this, on 1899, it looks like it's more of a natural limestone color, uh, more of a cream tones in it. I think that you know you'd still achieve your contrast. If, I don't know if you're trying to do a different um, color palette with both of these because it looks like the woods are similar, but one's darker than the other. I think that if you even if the woods are different, um, different stains, 
you would still achieve that sort of difference in the in the homes by getting the same kind of like creamish colored limestones. Um, I think that if the fenestration um, aluminum channels and things uh, were more of a darker gunmetal gray versus the lighter colors, um, you might like the um, the neighbor at the end of the property has a, a railing and it's more of a, a, po a powder coat polish, not pol polish, but powder coat uh, gunmetal gray. And that's it's, it's sort of dark. You don't have to go that dark, but just to say to kind of go more in the in the gray families and going into the silver families. Um, and the stucco, I think it's you know the, it, you want to keep that lightness to it. So even if it, even if it doesn't go to cream, everything else will be more of those earth tone colors. And that would be just your, your your pop element would be the white. Um, you know, for me, I think that there's a lot going on. But it's a it's a very large property, so I to me it doesn't seem overly busy. Um, I do I think that the entry element's a little strange to me because you have this very large um, this large property volumes, and this entry element is like this small little um, archway, like a like a Stonehenge type archway system that almost doesn't even need to be there. It's like an extra extra element that you can just get rid of and make the, make it more about the a house and the volume of the house. Um, the landscaping is a little bit a challenge to review because what's on the plan isn't necessarily what's on the the colored elevations. And so, you know, you might look at the colored elevations and go, well, that looks nice, but it's not actually what's going to be there. And some, some, and some ones are showing lawn and others show landscaping. If you could just stay consistent when you do presentations in the, in the future, that'd be easier for us to under, for me to understand. If I do the landscaping with you. Um, to uh, Mr. Gergos's point on the east elevation, what the landscape plan is showing is a taller uh, hedging type that material. So I think that you know from this when when someone looks across the hillside and sees that elevation, you know, you won't even see this really. You won't see. The white it's to cover it it'll cover all of that, and they're and they're planting up pretty much the whole length of that elevation. So, you know, it's, it's like a, a four or five foot shrub. It's a uh, well, it can get to about 10, 12 feet tall, and it's a. Uh, I think they're calling out a purple variety. They're calling out a green variety. I, you know, either green or purple. It it has a nice kind of a reddish tinge to it, so you'll have that kind of color palette working into the plant material. Okay. And I think the. Yeah, I don't think that this will be... You do enough be, to tone down that. Yeah, I think they'll tone it down. Yeah. Yeah, if they were planting, like, you know, ground covers or low... Yeah, so I was asking. I, I didn't know what they were... Yeah. How it interpreted. So in terms of that, I think that works. I, I would like to see, I think from the south ele elevation, you know, it is a very prominent elevation. You can see it from very far away. Um, right now you're showing four palms. I just think if you could add some more, like, lower volume king palms or some sort of other tropical materials that... I think king palms, really, just away from those, maybe towards the house, just to kind of give it a little bit more of a green texture, screen, screen back the house a little bit, give it a little bit more of that um, feeling like you're in a landscape versus just that the house is out there with a lot of paving in front of it. Um, so I'm not suggesting that you add a ton of plant material. I'm just saying, you know, a couple of properly placed palm trees or bird of paradise, tall bird of paradise, um, large, large, tall elements to kind of uh, break up the volume. One of the questions about the neighborhood, you know, the viewing down below, is there plant material down below that would stop a visual to something down below in terms of the plant material that's on the hillside that might block out some of the view to a lower neighbor? Well, I think on this property they don't really have a problem with a lower... I'm saying the one neighbor that was looking on to the... Uh, yeah, I mean, you could. You downside. could put larger shrubs. Because obviously, if it was down slope, something was down slope, it wouldn't interfere with their view out, but it would right. stop the view down to the. Um, and so I, I think that I would probably make more of that comment to uh, the neighboring property, 1890, 1899, because this one's at the end. More prominent. Doesn't either. really. I'm sorry, I don't mean to. Okay. Yeah. Um, Just to, while we're on the landscaping, which property is it that would be more affected by that pool down below? Which, well, which one is affecting that one more? Uh, we, I think we determined yeah. that it was the 1899 property was 99, that okay. was going to impact. And on both of the properties, because the cliff below is very steep and very rocky, uh, we were actually looking to uh, Pro Tem Chair Sakai to maybe make some suggestions for plant material. Because what we find is that 
often what's proposed on the plans uh, can't be included because of the soils or because it's too hard to get to. Mm. Um, so the property owner downslope has asked for some consideration of landscaping that would help prevent the sloughing. Um, it's a really tough call because we don't, wouldn't want any contractor to have to mountain climb down that slope in order to plant. Uh, at the same time, we do want to protect the surrounding properties. So if you had any thoughts that we could take into consideration when reviewing the plans for the permit, that would be helpful. And that's for 1899? 1899 and maybe a portion of 1897 as well. I didn't mean to but you were talking about that. I was just thinking of landscape. Of yeah, so I wasn't overly concerned with the slope planting material of 1897, and I think that they do have ground cover that's naturalistic and part of the hillside design guidelines, so that will soften the edges and hopefully reduce the sloughing from below their property. <laughs> um, I think that was, I think the other, the other um, one other comment I have was on the nighttime illustration that you have at the bottom, the, the four small ones, the lower, le uh, lower left, it seems overly bright to me. Um, if, if, yes, you have all the lights on in the house, probably never, but if you happen to, and you have the lights on on the eaves, I think the eave lighting is maybe unnecessarily bright or maybe too much of it, or I mean, not even necessary because you have all that glazing. So I would just um, maybe put in a, a word to say, Look at the lighting, make sure when you put it in, it's not going to be so bright that you're going to create this visual <laughs> uh, candle on the hillside. Should we say reduce or eliminate the li recessed lighting in the eaves? I, I, would, I would think so. Okay, the if we... Wash, the building if, wash lighting. Yeah, I mean, if they can we have could, lighting on the exterior of the building for the, for the outdoor patio area, but not on the eaves. I think that's okay, so we'll just say eliminate it. That'll make it easier, because okay. it's very tough for staff to review lighting levels during plan checks. So if we say eliminate the eave lighting, that, that is a clear direction. Okay. Okay, so um, let... Let me try to capture what we've heard. Um, it seems like uh, we can go ahead and keep, uh, as for the staff conditions, condition number one, which discusses the oak tree, the protected trees. Um, we didn't hear much about the cantilevered patio terraces. Uh, I'm not sure if the, the board is concerned about that particular cantilever or not. Um, uh, we understand that uh, there may be a concern to provide screening uh, a wall on the west side, um, but we'd like the board to consider maybe reducing that cantilever, so we'd like your direction on that. Um, I think what we heard is that the planting that's shown on the east side would be sufficient to buffer the the view of the garage from the downslope, if we haven't gotten that right, uh, we can include a condition that makes certain that screening remains, that the screening shown on the landscape plan or some similar screening would be provided on the east side. So we'll include a condition like that. Um, we didn't hear any support for uh, the condition number five that we've included, simplify the west elevation changes of plane and use of material. And we heard a little bit about the entry, but it seemed a little bit different than what we had recommended. Um, and for conditions on the colors, what we heard is to substitute the white plaster with a more natural stone or cream or off-white that looks a little bit more natural to the hillside. Mm -hmm. Also, I think the comment about the aluminum going down to a, a darker gray, not so silver. Okay, so the, um, the finish of the aluminum on railings and soffits and other metal details should be a darker, darker color either 
bronze anodized, gunmetal gray, or or something that's not uh, the clear anodized aluminum. Yeah. Does that make sense? Sure. Can we? Yeah, it was yours. Whatever you want to do. I don't know about bronze. <laughs> okay. Can we go over two for a second? Can you just point out on the plan the area you're talking about for number two? Just so we're clear. So. Because the impression is that it's not really going past the existing this, line. I'm going to go ahead and point it out on here, it's right, it's right here, it's right this one. And it's this cantilever here that we were concerned about. And it's really this patio that we believe looks down uh, onto that property. And so I mean, we were most concerned really express on that. that. None of the drawings really express that what that is. That's why I didn't really understand. Is it the double dashed it's, line? See, this this area right here above this dashed line, that's a cantilever right here. Right, it doesn't really show any of the sections or the elevations. That's why I didn't really yeah, I'm not, catch what it is. It yeah, doesn't I'm really not, show any of the elevations. No, it doesn't. I'm not sure. I mean, they're showing it as a solid wall, not as a cantilever. I wasn't sure if it was that line, the solid line that kind of follows. I'm pretty sure that that is... This here is not a cantilever, but this here, I believe, is a cantilever. Because that is the edge of the pad. OK, I guess my question is, if, if they come in for a building permit for that cantilever, and you're going to review it in planning, what would that drawing be that's not here that you're then going to approve later? <laughs> well, if you can How would you say, yes, you can do that cantilever if it doesn't show up on these drawings? Well. To us, it shows up right here because that dot dash line shows. It's actually specified as that. I mean, because it. I. Because in the staff report, mm -hmm. everything they're saying they're not really changing the grading. They're not adding walls. Well, they're just going to add the cantilever. I'm just saying it's not showing on any of the drawings. It's not showing those sections. Right. So I don't. I don't understand what it is. I mean, I, I, it's. It's clear on the, the other one. Oh, yeah. It was a little clear on the other one. I was pretty sure we saw it on the section for this as well. It's on sheet A32, right here. Forgive me. It's this. So it's that section there. The plants are, if that little line is the cantilever, then, right? The so little piece of gray. This is right here. little piece of gray that's coming oh, across. Oh, yeah. This is the cantilever right here. So okay. that's. I knew we saw it somewhere. Okay. <laughs> Well, how much is it actually? What is the what is the face inside that we're seeing? The retaining. How, how high is that? We we were mostly concerned. We were not concerned about the overall design of it. We were primarily concerned with the intrusion on the property below. We weren't concerned about how it looked like. Well, I think my question is how mm -hmm. at the end of that cantilever, how far are you above the ground? That's I guess that's my question. There you go. This is a a better cross section. So that's a yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, I didn't see that. That's why. <laughs> is that in there, Patrick? Yes. yes. It was? Uh-huh. Okay. There you are. And here you see it. Okay, how do you catch that? So it's not it's not the kind of substantial vertical that we're usually calling your attention to for its design. It's primarily the the potential impact on the property below that we were pointing at. Since we have the aerial up, can we just talk about that if the, if there is something about that's happening on the and west then side? Actually, right? so it's yeah, it would be here. So that's why we were concerned about it that's on the pool. side. That's the issue right with right. the pool. Bed. Okay, now, now I get it. Yeah. That's why I was trying to get a handle on it. Okay. okay. <laughs> so we've explained it. Okay, well, then that's my question still, uh, April, is if you think the planting that would happen on that hillside, because this thing's coming out over a little bit more over the pool below, I mean, it seems like there could be something with planting that would alleviate the privacy issues for the pool, and they still get their view out. And that's my question. Excuse me. Well, I think that they're using the glass railing to to augment the view, so you can see through the railing. So if we put plant material, that goes I'm saying down, far enough down the slope, so that they can view out. But if you're at the edge, you're obstructed when you look down on someone else. There'll be some kind of shrub or something that would stop you from looking down. You can still look out because the planting's happening down the hillside. 
You with me on that? Yeah, um, <laughs> want me to draw it? <laughs> I guess, well, if, you, if you're talking about a shrub that's large enough that you could impede someone's view down, then that shrub would potentially be growing higher than your railing because there's no way. You'd have to go down the hill to maintain it. That's what I'm saying. It, you would down the, down, down the slope. And you'd have to go down the hill to maintain it, which is at this precipitous slope maybe not recommended. So what they're, what they're proposing is a lower plant material that just sort of covers the ground, has a potential to grow to the deck height, but isn't a plant that usually grows like you know three, four, five feet where you, if you look at it, it it's going to like kind of block the view downhill. Uh, so I don't know I could answer that question with a, a plant material that would dependably block the view and yet not grow up where it would also block their railing and their view and become a maintenance issue where... So um, I think the, the staff's recommendation to bring it back is that you don't actually get that, that uh, opportunity to walk farther out and look down where like someone's concerned, like someone's gonna walk to the edge of their, their balcony and look down and go, oh, there's a pool. Now you, you can't go that far, right? You're only allowed to come this far and look down. So to me, I think that seems pretty reasonable. It's not that far out to, uh, I mean, I, in one sense, they're not asking for that much. So it, is it really worth it to the down slope neighbor? Is it gonna really affect their view one way or the other? I don't know. Um, they did express a concern for someone looking into their pool. I think it's maybe a good faith effort to say, look, we're not extending it an extra foot, foot and a half, two feet, mm -hmm. um, because we recognize that your view, that your um, privacy might be impacted if we come out that extra two feet. And yes, we're planting material, but it's you know low material because we want to be able to see through the railing to get our view and appreciate the landscape and kind of have that sort of like you're floating on a, a hilltop kind of effect. Oh, I understand. I understand. I think that. Yeah, they're, showing, compromise? they're showing planting on that west elevation that's happening under the Canley Yes. Is that something that, that would at least get to the slab height? Yes. Yeah. It's that kind of shrubbery that could be maintained in the first, you know, five, ten feet? I think so, yeah. That's the kind of material that's at least going to grow up to, like, the slab height. Yeah, I think so. Okay. It should. And then, I, you know, I don't, I mean, the contours are pretty steep. I, I can't really speak as to what that will look like th third row down <laughs> mm -hmm. or how much that will affect your view down. If, if you look over the railing, you will see down into the neighbor's property. It's not going to impede your view. If you that's put up material that's higher, yeah, it will impede their view, but it will also grow to, to the, like with the railing heights, and I just don't know. Uh, maybe the yeah. compromise there is don't cantilever, but keep the ground covered <laughs> and not put in a larger shrub. <laughs> okay, so that's a, I'm just not familiar with the Carmel... Carmel it's it's, okay. it's more of a ground cover. I guess so about two, two feet tall. Really? The five gallon? Yeah, and I think with the, fi I think with okay. the hillside being rocky, that you know, I, I wouldn't recommend going bigger. I, I was looking at this, maybe the... Uh, but do you think that's going to grow to like four or five feet? No, no, two feet. Two feet. So it's not even going to cover the... It's barely going to cover the can lever. It'll grow... How much is it going? Like a couple of feet. Find the section. If the section doesn't look looking for it, find it. Find. Okay. I just think if there was a if there was a plant material that at least grew up to the slab, it would need to it would need to grow four or five feet high, and then it would get to the slab height. And I think it could do all those things. It could camouflage the cantilever, it could minimize the view down, it could do all those things and still give them the view out. So can we just make that a recommendation? I would we like could. That something like the coyote bush that would grow to four to five feet tall. Yeah, because if it's out, if it's growing, you know, four feet out, and it's basically at slab height, if somebody's at the edge, they're not going to be able to look down, but everybody else gets to look out, you know, and it's one of those kind of things, you know. Well, we, we have to go with what's on the hillside development guidelines and there I'm aren't if there is something in the hillside development guidelines. aren't a whole lot of <laughs> choices um, you could probably pick a sea and this other than the caramel creeper that grows taller um, you know like the heteromelis will get taller but it'll just keep going <laughs> 
But could it, is something like that, could, could it be pruned down and still yeah. be okay and not get woody? You know, ramnus, roos, um, these are all larger. Uh, mix in some rose, some roses um, that could achieve that, I guess. Yeah, you could do a shrub versus a ground cover. Yeah, I just think it's. I think it's one of those things. They could still have their view. The downsloping person gets their privacy. I mean, it's. A, it seems like a very obvious or simple solution. You minimize both, and they still get their view. I guess it. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> either way, it's. Yeah, fine with me. I mean, I would. I would be comfortable in that. You know, if it's this can like especially since you're can laboring. So you're saying keep the can lever. Keep the can lever. I mean, just saying if you. If you can grow something four or five feet out that's going to grow up to six feet high, it's it's right about where slab height is. So if somebody's on the cantilever deck, they still have their view. But if they were to come to the edge, they're obstructed from looking down into the thing. So everybody gets, everybody's happy, which is our So goal. <laughs> um, could we provide them the option to bring back the it's, cantilever or to provide a... Five, a taller shrub, a shrub to five feet that would grow at least to the bottom of the slab. Yeah. Right. I would okay. be comfortable with that. Okay. okay. So that's a condition, but they get to choo have a choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I that's fine. That's, that's fine. Works for me. Okay. So we'll maintain condition one. Uh, condition two will be modified so that they have a choice to redesign the cantilever patios at the southwest and west edges or provide a shrub that grows to about five feet uh, the height of the slab itself that would provide a screening uh, from the vantage point uh, at the edge of the railing and then uh, we'll strike uh, condition number three because we've included that in condition number two uh, sounds like we'll strike uh, conditions four and five and modify six. So what I have uh, for the conditions that we've heard is provide darker finish for metal finish on canopies and win window systems such as a gunmetal gray. Provide colors such as limestone or buff color rather than the white plaster that will maintain the contrast but still provide a natural look. Uh, I have provide screening to the east elevation as shown or other type of screening material to grow to 10 to 12 feet high and eliminate lighting in the eaves and provide only landscape and accent building lighting. Did we capture all of the conditions and considerations? Would it be too much to ask to have the applicant add a very simple section that showed the plant material profile, the slope, and how it well, since that's a condition, um, we can require that prior to building permit issuance. And we'll add that on to that condition number two. If nobody wants to add to that, I won't make it. I want to add a consideration for adding more palms in the mm -hmm. southern elevation in, in the patio area to kind of soften the south elevation. Okay, so provide... Palms, or was it king palm king, specifically? Well, king palm specifically because they're a smaller palm than the one that they're proposing. King, they could use any species. Of, they just were similar to similar king, king palm. palm. Yeah. So include king palms <sighs> in the within the deck area pool to deck. the south. Uh, yeah, the upper pool deck. Within the upper pool deck. To the south, so the house appears to be sitting in a landscape. Yes. And that's a condition or a consideration? If you want a condition, maybe. I'll condition it. It doesn't have, and you don't have, again, they don't have to use king palms. They could use another tall plant material that is within their palettes. <laughs> king palms or other tall plant material. Okay. If, if there are no other additions, I I'll make a motion to approve the project with noted conditions and comments. Considerations. And I'll second. In terms of a roll call, uh, Board Member Garagos? Yes. Board Member Karoglian? Yes. Uh, Chair Pro Tem Sakai? Yes. The motion passes 3 0.
Okay, so we'll move on to the third project on the list, uh, also by Stephanie. <laughs> Once again, I'll pinch it for uh, Mr. Baxter. This is uh, 1899 Starvale Road, um, and much of the report is similar. Uh, so there will be a little bit of repetition. The project includes replacing an existing 2,953 square foot single story house constructed in 1961 with a new 4,692 square foot two story house with a patio terrace of a modern design. On this property, two oak trees are located on the east side within 20 feet. Uh, the Urban Forester commented that the project does not appear to have significant impacts on the indigenous trees located on the adjacent properties. Uh, once again, we wanted to call your attention to that correction in house size and subsequent average from 5613 to 4492. This project is uh, located next to the house that you've just reviewed on the flag lot approximately 100 feet away from Starvale via a private drive. This house uh, and new three-car garage, usable open space patio terrace will be constructed on the existing pad, once again to avoid building on the slope. The patio terrace areas will include a pool, spa, and fire pit, and this also cantilevers beyond the slope of the existing pad, although no substantial grading is proposed. Uh, staff felt that this particular patio uh, may have even more impact on that property below. Uh, one correction that we wanted to make to our commentary on the landscaping, uh, the Toyon trees are apparently included in our hillside design guidelines but we are particularly concerned about the steep and rocky slope on the west side. So if you could pay particular attention to their landscape plan and if there's anything better that we can recommend. Um, uh, once again, the privacy section, uh, the proposal does appear compatible with the intent of the guidelines because it is set back from the pad. The cantilever patio terrace facing the west and the second floor windows and patio area that face the north. Um, this is a, a different impact, different house that may be impacted. The house, the one story house to the north of this property may have some privacy impacts by those upper windows and patio terrace uh, because that looks downslope to the neighbor's pool, backyard areas to the west. Um, and the north-facing second-story window and balcony open openings appear to overlook that north neighbor's pool and courtyard area. So we've added conditions to that effect to provide clear story windows at this location or screen with a solid material the second floor balconies into the pool in the courtyard of the adjacent neighbor. Um, as far as mass and scale, the overall design of the new house, including the roof line configuration and the patio terrace, is generally consistent with the design guidelines. The design does relate to the surrounding topography, building height and scale of the surrounding buildings, particularly on the adjacent slopes. However, the east side or entry elevation consists of a two-story glazed entry flanked by one-story volumes. This entry has a monumental quality and could be reconsidered. Uh, here, the soffit and the parapets provide a datum around the ground floor, which provides a pretty strong architectural statement uh, because the element transforms to provide the balconies on the west side of the building. And these balconies help reduce the monumental appearance of that two-story elevation. Uh, once again, we've heard from uh, some of the surrounding neighbors that were here this evening that the story poles convey a massing that is maybe inappropriate to the surrounding neighborhood. 
Uh, we've visited the site three times to view those story poles from the driveway down the hill and surrounding streets. We've concluded that due to the placement on the building on the site, its step backs and overall formal design, the mass and scale appears appropriate. However, the monumental design of the entry could be improved and the west elevation could be further broken down. Once again, we're recommending to reconsider the white stucco and the stone colors to better blend with the hillside. Um, we've provided some suggested recommendations. We would recommend to eliminate uh, item one, uh, the proposed toy on trees are acceptable, uh, but that if there's an, a more appropriate planting for those steep and rocky westerly slopes, um, that the cantilever patio terraces be reconsidered, uh, reduce the size of the north facing window in the second floor gym, and or replace with a clear story window to protect privacy of the neighbor's pool and courtyard to the north. Um, once again, on number five uh, is regarding the concern about privacy here. The pool can be flipped uh, to be on the outside of the patio terrace in order to prevent any privacy impacts. Um, and here we're also calling for uh, colors that blend in with the hill size, reconsideration of the two-story entry, and reconsideration of the massing of the west elevation. That concludes staff report, and we're here to answer any questions. Any questions for staff? At the moment. Okay. And I'll open the public discussion. Uh, Sacco Marcosi. You state your name and address for the record. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good evening, um, uh, board members. My name is Sacco Marcosi again. I'm the project architect located at 320 Arden Avenue. Suite 120, Glendale, California, 91203. Um, again, this is a similar, uh, in terms of style of architecture, is similar to what we just reviewed uh, prior to this. Um, uh, most of uh, discussions that we had on the other project in terms of color of the plaster and the fenestration, uh, I think we could, um, we could do the same thing on this one. Uh, one thing, uh, the, the cantilever, uh, the, there was discussion about the cantilever uh, decks. Uh, I would prefer to, to uh, keep the cantilever deck but provide some sort of a, a taller screening if, if plant material which is specified is not tall enough. A taller material so uh, when it's grown it will actually grow up to the top of the slab so the only thing visible would be the railing. Um, it, as a matter of fact, this property has lesser impact on the pool area, as I hear from, I, as I heard from the neighbors down below, than 1897, because this is primarily look. This is looking at their back wall, which is uh, utilities, bathroom, very small fenest, little fenest, fenestration on their side of the house. If you look at the aerial view, you'll notice what I'm talking about. So we're facing directly our. Our backyard faces uh, their side yard, which is on that side of their house. Uh, they don't have any rooms uh, or large windows that are uh, 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 that are affected uh, in terms of privacy. Uh, the only uh, concern that they have again is the pool, and the 1899 address is farther away from their pool area than the 1897. So. Um, the, the county liver, as I mentioned, will um, take into consideration to uh, plant something which will grow tall enough to, to cover the county liver portion. And on this project, um, we, the county liver uh, deck, if you notice, we have a terrace deck. We have the main deck, which is the terrace, which is right level with the living quarters. And then we have the pool, which is sort of a, a, an infinity pool which has a fall on the west side, and then the terrace is stepped down about two and a half feet, uh, and then again uh, is further uh, terraced by the planting which is below that cantilever portion. Um, 
Oh, uh, another uh, issue that we have, our, one of our neighbors is here, and we had lengthy discussion with them. We're willing to, um, if, if the board will consider, we're willing to provide a horizontal uh, window on, on the north facade where our bedroom is, right above the bed, rather than with these verticals, which is a concern to the neighbor. They think it would uh, in, infringe upon their privacy, especially their pool area, which is in their front yard. The other item is in the north elevation. Yeah, the north. Yeah, the north elevation. Mm -hmm. Yes, north elevation. The other item is we have a, a gymnasium where we have a large window, uh, and that is primarily to pull in light. It's a fixed window, and if it's uh, if it's okay with the board, we could go with some sort of a treated glass, like a frosted glass, where you cannot see through, but we can get all the light that we need. You know, mm -hmm. because. Uh, and the neighbors seem to agree uh, they don't mind if we keep the window but go to a frosted glass on that one. Um, uh, on, on the terrace where the staff is recommending some sort of a screen wall, which is uh, directly above the garage, one thing that I could do is right now the edge of my terrace is close to, closer to the building. And what I'm uh, proposing to reduce the width of that terrace provide more of a distance between the edge of the uh, building and the edge of the, of the terrace. In other words, I'm going to make a larger roof and a smaller terrace to uh, be further away from their property. So that will... Uh, Show me on the... Yeah, I, if I may approach... Are you coming from the front wall or from the side wall or yeah. both walls? <laughs> from the side wall. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Right now, this... This is the top of, this is the wet north side of the garage wall, which is this one. On top, this is this one. Uh, I have a, a four feet setback from the edge of this patio to the garage wall, another 10 feet between their property and our, and, and, and our wall. And beyond that, they have a four feet setback and they have a sort of a, their house is sort of like has a um, sort of a breezeway which connects the garage to the house and the pool is in their front yard. So by flipping these doors and the windows this side, I opening to this side, I can pull this uh, roof back far enough so that it will, a person standing here physically, you'd be something like 10 plus 15. Would you take that tallest all the way out to the front? Front wall of the garage, or would you pull it back from the front wall of the garage? Oh, this one. Yeah, would you, the the terrace, the future. Oh, the terrace. If you're bringing it in from the side wall. Would you yes. also bring it in from the garage wall? Would that the front wall? Is that a, is that a consent? Because the front wall is. I'm just asking you if that's what you're talking about or not. No, I'm just talking about just bringing, that side. Yeah, okay. just that side to to be further away physically from from the house. Uh, I mean. I could put a, a, it would sort of look odd if I have an elevated wall here. I'm not sure how that would work with the design. How are you going to change that railing that you're doing then? How would the railing work on that perspective? Oh, the railing will still remain the same. Still have the railing and the I have the railing. Thing? Yes, I have. Right now the railing is, uh, oh, it will be further, I'm sorry, it will be further out. So the railing is going to come back. Yes, it's going to come back. It's going to shoot out halfway in the middle of the garage wall, come out the front. Right, right. Okay. Yes, that's what it's going to look like. All right, I'm not, that doesn't appeal to me. But. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what other ways to. I mean, that's that was one well, thing that I thought. You have the railing, but you just bring the deck. I guess the terrace back. Yeah. Are you actually doing a built-in planter at the top parapet, or what are you? Actually, doing? Yeah, I plan on. It would be potted plants. Potted plants. It, it would be like something like a uh, grate, which is sitting above the roof, which will be easily removed and so when you want to maintain the roof and the pilot plants will be all sitting on top. So the plants you're showing on the perspective, it, that's actually happening behind the parapet. Yeah, behind the parapet, behind right. The parapet. Yes. Well, you could do a garden up there now. If you pull that back, you have an actual like five foot yes. space to put plant material, mm -hmm. right? Right, right. They're doing that? Putting plant material up there? So. What I am putting, but it's in the pots. I mean, like a on grade, an on deck planter with plants that are landscape plants. Yeah, well, what I'm planning to do is the roof will be com completely waterproof mm -hmm. and there'll be an elevated uh, grate, like a metal grate, about six inches sitting above the roof. 
and all the potted plants will be sitting on top of that. So there's no root intrusion into the actual structure of the building. If, if the roots are growing, we grow out of the pot rather than getting into my waterproofing and roof and whatnot. It's, it's a liability that I have a concern. I don't want to put planting directly on top of the roof. So what, how would you differentiate the terrace from the roof on the garage roof? How would you, how would you do that? Would you just put a railing there to differentiate the two? How would you differentiate the two? If you if you you're saying you're going to bring the terrace back, but there's still going to be roofing. So how are you going to differentiate between back, the two? The, the roofing will have it right now. The way the roofing is, the, the the terrace, the railing will come out, maybe another right now it's four feet. Will come back about another six feet, so it's a ten feet setback from the edge, and this will sort of uh, the railing and and the guardrail will go around. So you'll actually have a, a parapet that'll make the L with yes. a railing on top. It, it, exactly. That's okay. Right. A parapet, yes. But you could continue the outside, so at least architecturally it would be consistent, like from perspective. Yeah, I guess I could continue the outside, the railing on the outside. Just because I think it's going to make that look a little yes, odd. Yes, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what I'm saying. You're saying if this moves over here, yeah. it's going to be, yeah, I, I know what you're concerned. Well, that, that's one solution I thought of in terms of without really uh, creating additional. If I put a, some sort of a screen here, I'm not sure how it will look like. It's Yeah, no, I, I, agree. Yeah. I agree, I agree, I agree. And, and the other, this windows, I could turn them horizontally, and this one, I could make this a frosted one, so that way all the private, they will. Put that wall and extend it out to the edge of the terrace. Right now, we do have a wing wall which is extending right, out. Kept going instead. Kept of, going. That would be like your privacy barrier. You have cutouts on the top that mm. are, mimic the windows, but it's not a solid wall. But that yeah, it no. wouldn't be at the eye level, so that it's you nice. block up and look down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I like that. I guess I could. <laughs> it's just. Um, it's a little easy. Yeah. And your railing wouldn't be all weird. Yeah, the ra yeah, railing would stop, I guess. I don't know how far the... That house is really yeah. close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying on the north elevation, you're going to frost the lower two panes for the gym windows. Right. Keep the top one clear. Keep the top one clear and then put another, something similar to this here. So that... Keep those two long ones or those go no, away? No, don't those go, go away. Those go away with just a clear, clear, yes. clear story. So somebody from inside, okay. basically these are clear story windows. I think you just carry that same repetition into the... So that, into that, that wall. Thin, that wall that continues yeah. further out. I really and like that. Open yeah. yeah, I really like that. Yeah. And yeah. their neighbor who... And actually, yeah, I think I it would look nice. So you, if you dropped it at the extension, yeah, it would drop sh down slightly. It would be a shorter wall, and it would go out yeah. with some yeah. openings. Very nice. Yeah. No openings. No just openings. do a low enough. So just a low, low enough. enough. Yeah. Low. Same I, yeah. The openings defeat the purpose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking the wall continue at the same height, right. and then you continue the openings through it. Yeah, I believe. If you one. wanted to open it, the clear story height, opening to the clear story height. Yeah. Or you could drop it and then continue down with no opening. Yeah, either way. Either way. Yeah, it has to be at least high enough where something like six feet tall, the eye level. Eye level. It will be above the eye level. You're showing it as a single element anyway. You're not wrapping it anyway, so it could very nicely pull out. Absolutely. Yeah, we could do that. And. So if you have in your packet, I think you do have sections of you showing the the terraced uh, backyard and, and this vegetation is something that you could, uh, you know, I, I could talk to my landscape or to plant something which is within the hillside guidelines but it grows tall enough so yeah. it will screen completely that can make While it. we're talking about that, I have an issue with that. I mean, it's, what's interesting about flipping the pool and everything is uh, you're actually putting that fire pit in the corner. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Oh, they, they're talking about putting the pool on this side and the... No, but I'm saying the fire pit is actually coming down lower, and it's actually right. the site that has the most impact to the pool down below. Okay, so... You know, it's the lowest spot. You see what I'm saying? The, the, the fire Actually, pit's coming down, people are sitting right, there. Right. We could do that. Closest and lowest to the pool adjacent, you know, that's... Okay. The, yeah, we could do that. It's, it's yeah. emphasizing all the wrong... Yeah. All the wrong... Uh, the, only, the only disadvantage of that would be we're losing a little bit of about maybe three feet of this terrace. Effectively, oh, if I flip it, but I I don't think it's, it would be an issue. We could flip it. The pool gets the toes. Yes. 
Yeah, we could we could. I mean, that. in some ways, your whole barbecue area is up on the top, and then you right. have a, you'd have a wider area by the barbecue mm -hmm. area, which I think would be possible. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we could do that. Yeah, we could flip it. And the pool ends up being an emphasis outside sure. of the, outside sure. of the living room. Right. Right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Other class? Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Thank you. We have more cards. <laughs> that took forever, but um, very helpful. Architect of Latian. Yeah. No, that's the yes. What? No, that's that's the his. One. That's the other one. I don't think. Is there an extra? Did you leave? Or one? did you bring that one up? No, that was his. Oh, that was that one. <laughs> we'll figure. We'll one. figure out where his packet went. I think I borrowed yours. Okay. Yeah, I guess. We're... Yeah. So that's it. Sorry. <laughs> just give us a second. He here. might have written on it. I'm just saying that's the only reason he might have. Written Make sure you have the right packet. Okay. So, go ahead. Sir. Okay, my name is Artak Dovlatin. Um, address is two one three North Orange, Suite A, Glendale, California nine one two zero three. Again, I representing the ownership on this project. I uh, just wanted to clarify one issue that the uh, one of the neighbors brought up. We did notify all the tenants. We did it in two forms. We sent via mail, and we also actually had an individual deliver the actual letter to the property itself. So we had two forms of mail. Uh, and also, that particular property that uh, was identified as 1930 Starvale was, is on the right side of the, of the street. And I have 1920, which is the property adjacent to that that is in support of the project. So in essence, uh, their impact is very minimal and uh, we did notify them and their neighbors did show up that were directly adjacent to it. So I just wanted to m <laughs> make sure that everybody did have an opportunity and we did every everything that we possibly can to invite all the neighbors. Um, and again, as far as uh, the issues directly adjacent to the property with the neighbor. We have identified them and we've been working with her and the property owners uh, to clarify and make them feel more comfortable with the development. We do understand it does impact them and as such we are trying to mediate it and trying to compromise and make sure that both properties are in, both property owners do get what they want. And again, if there's any other questions, I'll be more than happy to answer. Okay. Oh, geez. Anelli Rotani Atunian. Just please state your name and address for the record. My name is Anelli Artunian. Uh, my address is 1895 Star Railroad, Road, Glendale, California, 91207. I'm just a neighbor of this. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my house is just uh, next to the new development, um, 1899. Uh, as you see, it's very close, and um, it's pretty well right now. Like, nothing is distracting your view, and uh, prefer to keep it as it possible. But things move on, and I uh, support this uh, project very much. It's a beautiful project, but at least it will not impact um, as much uh, let it impact as little as possible to the neighbors. Uh, my main issue is the uh, uh, privacy issue uh, on the north side when they are pulling the second floor and there are windows d directly looking to the pool and to the patio area. So if they um, can't say they might eliminate all the windows, it's impossible, I think. That would be the best way, but at least to um, keep it as um, <coughs> profile as possible because it looks directly to the pool. So my you main did you understand the modifications we were talking about yeah. previously? Okay. Yeah, I do, I do. Okay. Um, Are those acceptable to you, or do you feel that that's still infringing uh, on your privacy? Well, I understand there is no way to put a skylight instead of the window, but to make it at least as much um, is affecting the privacy as it's possible. Well, a clear story window will be above someone's natural eye level, so they won't be looking out the window. Mm -hmm. That brings in the light, but then... Yeah, I understand. So, of course, it's not the best way when we bought properties like one story all over and no, nothing is impacting your view. So, in this case, this led to the least they can do. Like, 
make it more um, affect it less than possible. And the other concern is the front uh, of the west elevation of the um, when they go up front, there is no there is no pool now on that property on 1899. I'm confused. I understand your concern. There will be uh, they will be going forward, right, to the to make a pool to make a um, space on for a pool on the back of the house. On the back, back of, of the, the house, house. Okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, so um, I'm not sure how far it will go, like one feet, two feet, three feet, but. Uh, after one feet, if they go further, it will impact um, the view when you look to the city of Glendale. Because the view is the main value of the house, and you have to keep it as uh, is it. Uh, it is so, um, my concern is that much too, that uh, how far it will go and how it will distract from the left side of the property. Um, I ask you a question. This is the aerial that shows your house and the proposed to the house next to you. Uh, this, yeah. You have a, um, like a six-foot-high fence that runs along this property line. How far out does that go? Does it go all the way to the edge of your house, the property? Uh, no, it's like a uh, very curvy, like heart. And it's, so it's, it's about six feet high to about maybe here. I know it's hard to, to see. Maybe you, you know your house pretty well. Oh, oh. Oh, it's like very low. Uh, it's like uh, angled. So like it angles down yeah. to the ground. So yeah. then you would say that it was like a maybe five, six foot height here, and then and it, it angles down. down. So from here, you you see everything. You could be able camera. to. Yeah, I was gonna say we need <laughs> to be able to hear what you're saying and record it. So if you don't mind, On the board? is it possible? <laughs> no, is it possible to use the smart screen to oh. see? I can turn. Perfect. I can manipulate the. The image. Use the stick. Here's the stick. Which which direction did you well, need to? Well, let's just, let's just use the stick. So you're saying that <laughs> that this is a the fence that goes along here. Yes. And then from about, about where the existing house is now, maybe it's, it starts to slope down. Yes. To zero. Yes. And that you have windows on this corner. Uh, uh actually, oh. not. The, it's not affecting the view. The only part affecting is like from the. Oops, sorry. Uh, from the master bedroom, Here. from the left side side, it goes like in kind of an angled uh, position. So in this area? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, to your right. Oops. No. <laughs> All right. Now. Okay, We'll again. <laughs> because actually the new house won't be as far out as to here. House. Correct. Where about the pool there? The deck will be out in this area here. But if we switch the pool, it kind of alleviates that problem as well, because then they're just talking about fire, so which is lower down. Right. There go. Okay, so the fence ends about here, comes down the slope. Yeah, it will block the view to downtown completely if it goes all the way high. Up to the end? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any other questions? <laughs> okay. Basically, it's a beautiful That's, project, so we think um, it will work out somehow. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's the last card I have, so we'll close the public hearing. I'll give you uh, a rebuttal if you want. Okay. No. <laughs> sure, come on up. I'm sorry, I don't want to take much of your time. I, I know her concern is that she uh, she thinks that our, because our, our house pad is some two and a half feet above hers. Hers is at 11.51 elevation, ours is at 11.53 and a half. So we're two and a half feet above their living. So uh, when we come out with a deck, uh, her concern is that if, the, if that deck is extended out, when they're sitting at their patio, that might block their view. But actually, the part where it's projecting beyond uh, the edge of their uh, fence wall, 
which is stepping down. Actually, we're stepping down another two and a half feet, so we're level with their patio. At the level which, the part which is projecting out is level with their patio. So, so when they're sitting at the patio and looking out towards downtown or the uh, uh, westerly views, uh, our patio would be the same levels, uh, level as theirs. So, and it shouldn't be a concern. And by flipping the pool, uh, it's even further reduced the impact, if any. Thank you. Okay, so I'll close the public hearing. Um, and who wants to start with this one? With it? Uh, no, I think it's, uh, like I was saying, I think um, this one has sort of a more unified design, <laughs> which I like better. Uh, uh, I think it's strong. I think it's good. Um, and with the modifications we talked about, I think it alleviates a lot of the issues, and I would be in support of it. I do think the whole issue about the colors, um, I think it is kind of a concern. You know, I, I think a, a house that is too bold up on the hill, I think, is counter to what the hillside guidelines were. So if there was a way to tone down the color, I would be in support of that. And with the modifications we talked about, I would be in support. Again, I would be in support of it, and uh, uh, specifically focusing or repeating myself, I guess, for as it was for the first project, uh, uh, the, the color uh, a little, if it's changed it uh, and blended with the entire uh, atmosphere on the hillside would be uh, much better um, in general. Of course, the other recommendations are to be considered as well. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much in favor of this project as well. I think that they're, you know, they're both designed nicely and they're both in the modern style. I appreciate, I, one thing I didn't say in the, the previous um, discussion was I appreciate the, the effort that the applicant has gone through to engage the neighbors and get their feedback and try to, you know, try to address all their issues. Um, to the one per neighbor that's adjacent to you, your issue about the view, I think flipping the pool will kind of uh, alleviate that. Um, one other suggestion I would have is to where the, the cantilever that you're proposing, I mean, I know this maybe this is a suggestion, but the cantilever you're proposing um, brings the fire pit out further um, beyond the level of the patio that it is currently at. Uh, if that could be pulled back to where the level, where the infinity pool is currently shown. So, not here. Where are we? I need a stick. <laughs> So the suggestion I have is to, when you flip this, this fire pit line could then move back to where this line exists right now. And these stairs could still continue down like you're showing here, or you could, you know, however you want to flip that. But this idea that it starts further back, and then this cantilever wouldn't, need, would be, wouldn't be necessary. Uh, for the fire pit would have enough space on this lower level, but it would be at this. So all of this would come back to where the pool is. And then the pool would be sitting out in this area and you could have your lower terrace. And you know it, whether that jogs um, like, like here, whether this just comes straight across to keep it, to get rid of the cantilever altogether, I don't know that you're gonna be using any of the space outside the back end of the infinity pool. It's more of just maintenance at that point. So I think at I mean, seven foot four inches, if you lose the foot to two feet of cantilever, you're still at a good five feet. You can still maintain the, the, the pool at this point, and the fire pit would have that much more space that you would need around and access it over here. And that would help with whatever angles we're talking about over here. But I don't know if other board members are in favor of that or if they just think that this is fine the way with the cantilever. And then also to the point about doing the landscape materials, um, this plan is really small, but um, I guess, you know, I don't know the soil's condition on your, on your, on your downslope property here. Uh, I'm going to guess it's rocky and pretty difficult to plant on. Uh, your landscape designer is, or architect is proposing 24 inch box trees. Um, that's probably going to be possible to put in there. Um, these do get, so these are on the shrub plan. The, the, plan that, was pre that Mr. Baxter thought was actually not on the hillside design guidelines. And do you mind if I, 
since we can't see it on the... <laughs> okay, it's mounted too low. It's a little too low. So I if didn't you don't mount mind. it. <laughs> We're going to put it right here, if you don't mind. Okay, so I will go. start over. Um, because it's rocky, probably not going to get 24-inch box tr uh, toyan trees in here. Toyan is a good shrub to use on a hillside uh, that do get tall. So I think you're, if you're, you said you were willing to talk to your landscape architect about putting a material up here that would grow tall enough to get to the deck um, slab, um, perhaps not using these and not using them at that size. You could probably go with uh, smaller uh, species in the shrub families that get to like the three, four foot high three to five foot high in a smaller uh, gallon, one, one to five gallons, so that obviously you're not breaking into the hills. And then obviously keep the ground cover. And the other um, comment I have about the design, basically I want to say that it's a good design. <laughs> I was, I'm in favor of the design. I, I like what Mr. Tyson does. It's, it's, um, it's always very, very well thought out. Um, I just have a comment about here. He's proposing to put in the taller uh, shrub material. Uh, S1 in this corner, and I think it'd be cleaner and kind of more in, in line with what you're showing in your um, in your elevations here of a low plant material to keep it all just with your ground cover and your uh, lower plant material, which is the A1 for the, the S3. So you can pick or he can somehow work that in so that it's just the two materials, the two shrub materials within the ground cover, get rid of the S1, uh, keep it all low, and then it's dead, so that it also doesn't like block your house. Um, other than that, I think it's pretty well thought out. And I like, you know, we talked about the, the um, privacy issue on the top of the windows and so. Um, what do you guys think of the fire pit moving back and yeah, I think it's the cantilever? Yeah, I think yeah. The space outside the infinity seems unnecessary. Yeah. It almost seems like they're trying to carry the cantilever just because it's happening all the way through as opposed to... Okay. Do you want to make a motion? Do you want to run through the... Yeah, I, I, we would just like to get a little more clear on uh, some of the shifting around. On the deck... Uh, what is being proposed now is to shift the lap pool to the south and the fire pit to the north and eliminate that lower walking surface around both. Is that is that what's being recommended? No, you'd keep the lower walking surface. You'd eliminate the cantilever part of the walking surface. Okay. So yeah, there is still a walking surface without the cantilever. Okay, so um, the lap pool, the location of the lap pool moves to where the fire pit's shown, and the fire pit moves to where the lap pool is shown. And I think the fire pit wants, yes. And then the fire pit is uh, on the upper level rather than the lower level of the deck. It's, the lower it's, level. it's lower still on the lower deck. Yeah. So that it doesn't obstruct. It would be. Um, but because it's away from that, l the lower properties pool area, it creates less of a privacy concern. Right, and because it's low, the neighbor could see past. So. I, I see. Okay, so we're flipping the fire pit to the north, flipping the pool to the south, and uh, eliminating the cantilever on, on that deck. Um, then on the planting, uh, we heard that the planting around the living area should be lower. Uh, I'm not sure oh. that there's right. the garage and then that there's a living area. Yeah. I think that was the area you were pointing to. Right. They just have three shrub material that it's larger, the, the taller shrub material. I think just eliminate that and continue adding into that area, continue the two smaller that materials to fill in that space so okay. that you have more Eliminate. less material less different types of material and more of a, a lower um, uh, height 
on the plant material. So, specifically, <laughs> yes. Okay. I, I think I yeah. think we have it. You you're want to use the plant types that they've shown. So you're just going to get rid of S1. You're going to either use S3 or S or A1 to fill in that space. Remove S1 and fill in with A1. Or S3. With S3 or A1. And or a combination. Okay. <laughs> and were there any other landscape concerns that we may have missed? Because I think yeah, I just may to have eliminate the, the T2s in the on the hillside. In the 24-inch box. We make the same recommendation about the shrubbery yeah. that we did next door. And the shrubbery. The same note on the previous one about the shrubbery, five-foot shrubbery slope. Okay. Okay, so eliminate the T2 and provide five-foot five shrubs away from the edge of the slab. Okay. Well, shrub material that gets to the height of the slab. Right, to the right? height of the wall. And you can, they can... Use a T2, but they don't need. I think 24 inch box won't be impossible to install, so it would have to be a much smaller uh, installation size. And at that point, it becomes maybe more of a, a mass planting, which accom accomplishes our up to the slab height <laughs> requirement. So you can, they can use the T2, but in a um, 15 gallon? I would say. A five. Five gallon? Yeah, I mean, you can talk to the, I don't know, who do you talk to when they put the plants in, but you don't want to put something too large in a rocky slope. Which, right. Yeah. So five gallon who does that? Uh, for <laughs> area planting. I'll be out of time. Okay, so <laughs> those are the landscape comments. I think we've gotten the, uh, the deck comments um, and... Do we want to provide the same comments regarding the color of the metal, uh, wherever metal is used, so that it's a darker tone here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, um, on the previous discussion, we heard that the stone that was used is preferred uh, here we're talking about, we, we heard maybe that the palette should be modified here altogether, or is, if the white became a more similar color to the limestone, would that be acceptable? I think the idea for me was to just uh, move away from the white on both of them. They, didn't, they don't have to match each other. I think the idea of them being complementary, I think, is good. They don't have to be the same, but I do think that they both have to uh, become a warmer tone. Yeah, I think the same applies to the stone material, the limestone veneer, that it's within the creams and the, and the warmer tones, but it, they could be different colors. I think they should be different colors. They should be different. But complementary. Complementary, but different. So the... Colors should be warmer tones overall and uh, should be different than the, what is it, 1897. Um, I guess the, con I think what might come up is that the architect is using the white and the wood to contrast. So there's. You can still have that. I just think that the white needs to be a warmer tone. Okay, so it could be contrast. just as light, but it yeah. needs to be a warmer buff tone. Yeah. Right. Like on the, uh, well, on this material board, 1899, it has a, a yellowish tinge to it. That, I think, you know, it's warmer tone, more hillside. 1897, when you look at this limestone, and it's white. So if you look at the two together, it's very obviously different, different right? Okay. One's white, one's cream. If one had more yellow versus red versus pinks versus cream. I think that's what we're saying, that it doesn't, yeah, it, it they, want, they want to be different, but they don't want to be white. <laughs> and it would still allow you to change the stucco color too. That could still get darker and still have a contrast. Okay. Yeah, and the, you know, the, the aluminum doesn't have to be dark color. It could still be a lighter gray. 
gunmetal is just a suggestion, but okay. I know gunmetal can get kind of dark. So I'm just saying that this is kind of light. Okay, so... And in the so il- illustrations, it looked white, which I don't think is appropriate. Pose metal color is too light. And we'll provide the same conditions on the lights at the eaves as well as the previous one. Okay, so if... But there was... You got all the stuff about the... Yes, I'm getting to that. Um, The... See. It's the windows in bedroom two would become the north windows would become clear story. So the north windows um, in, I guess as you're reading the plan, it's bedroom number two and the gymnasium. Well, now bedroom two becomes a clear story only, right. and the gym becomes frosted. Okay, and what I have regarding regarding that upper deck is uh, to pull back the deck on the garage and provide potted plants for roughly a five-foot dimension along the north, uh, maintain the railing and pull back the deck, provide a separate railing along that habitable deck, and also extend that wall to the north for the length of that deck. I think it's, I would be comfortable either or, right? I mean, either you're going to extend the fin out as a wall, or you would pull it back. 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 It's either or. Oh, okay. And even in the wing wall, the option would be to keep its height solid at a point above head height, or if they wanted to continue it at roof height, it could have punctures in it that would happen at the clear story height. They would also have options in there also. Okay, so we have pull back the deck on the garage, provide potted plants above the garage and maintain the railing shown, or extend the wall, I guess that's on the east side. North side. side. On the north side. It's extending the north wall. Towards the east. The wing wall. For the the length of that deck. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you want to take it all the way out. For the end? <laughs> I think that might have Well, been. yeah, you want, you want to keep the railing at some point. I don't know that you can't really take it to the end of the No, you can't. Space. Take it. That wouldn't be Because you want the railing to continue and, yeah. You don't want it to pull back. To, you to that want. five foot point. Well, the yeah, maybe five foot from to, the Or to over. where the planting, yeah. where the deck ends. This actually isn't being shown on here. I don't think you'd want to take that wing wall all the way out to the front. Yeah, I, I yeah, would agree. That's kind of fun. It could step down as it came to the front. Okay, so that's an either or. Um, pull back the deck on the garage, provide potted plants above the garage, and maintain the railing shown. Within that first option, he was saying they were going to flip the door and window. The French door and the window were going to flip, which was going to give the space for the north side. That's part of the first half of the option. In order to get that five foot dimension, you have to flip the door. Right. The okay. Okay. Just give me a moment. Okay, I think we've I think we've got that one. We've got the the windows. We've got the metal color, the lights, and just want to make sure that we look at the staff proposed conditions. Were there any other plantings for that steep rocky slope that you'd like? to be considered, or shall we just, because I think the majority of that slope is 
left unplanted. Yeah, just the note about the yeah. five foot shrubs. Okay. Um, and we'll maintain the condition about the number two urban forester. That's fine. We've talked about redesigning the terraces. Uh, we have the revised condition on the windows and the colors. Is there any concern about the two-story entryway and the massing of the west elevation? No concerns there. Um, so I think that we have your conditions. If Just you'd read like them back. To read them back again? <laughs> sure. Okay. So what we have is, and I'm writing as I'm I'm talking, so forgive the the stuttering. Um, for the low plant material adjacent to the living area, eliminate the larger plants, removing the S1 and fill in with S3 or A1 or a combination of those plants. Um, for that shrub material, we're eliminating the T2 in that area and providing a shrub material that gets the height of the slab. Uh, you can also use the T2, but in a five gallon plant for a broader area planting. On the deck, we're removing the cantilever and flipping the pool to the south and the sunken fire pit to the north. Uh, we're saying that all the colors should be warmer tones. Uh, the color palette should be slightly different than 1897, uh, and all the tones should be warmer to fit into the hillside. The proposed metal color is too light. Uh, use a darker metal color, such as a gunmetal gray, and we'll word that similarly to the one on 1897. Uh, we'll also include, let's see, eliminate lighting in the eaves and provide only landscape and accent building lighting. Then on the north elevation, uh, bedroom number two, uh, the windows become clear story windows and the large window at the gym uh, should be obscure glass or frosted glass to eliminate privacy concerns to the north, to f the privacy concerns to the neighbor at the north. Um, and then for that uh, deck that the gym goes out to, pull back the deck on the garage, provide potted plants above the garage, maintain the railing shown, and provide a separate railing at the edge of the deck, flipping the door in the window to provide access, or extend the north wing wall to where that deck would end, that five-foot point. So that's what we have. It just to clarify, it sounded like you were saying it was the terrace outside the gym, it's the terrace outside the bedroom too. It, right. It it's like the same. It's that. It's that same terrace. Uh, if there's no additions, I would recommend that we approve with conditions and considerations noted. All second. I have a motion by Board Member Garagos and a second by Board Member Caroglian. Um, in terms of a roll call, Board Member Garagos. Yes. Board Member Caroglian. Yes. And Chair Pro Tem Sakai. Yes. The motion passes three zero. Okay. Then we are on to case number four, which is on Bel Air Drive. I don't have any cards for that. Uh, there's um, one right here. Okay, great. Actually, and great. Okay, 
It's uh, 2024. 2024. Um. Whenever Miss Strike is ready, and oh, okay, so you're subbing for Mr. Baxter. Sure. It's actually right here. Location, location map, photographic survey. I have a color material board for you as well. Or actually, is it already up there? At the And the material, I'm sorry, the material uh, color board is actually located below the home's colored elevation. So, okay, the last case on tonight's agenda is uh, case number 2 PDR 2011 027A. The project is located at 2024 Bel Air Drive, and the applicant is AMAC Group Incorporated. This is the first time submittal final review and the project involves the legalization of the front entry addition that includes the landing and the stairs includes legalizing the vinyl windows the tile roof material and in addition to the detached garage in the rear uh, the new front porch roof and columns are proposed to cover the entire landing the existing property is a 1,722 square foot single family home constructed in 1945 in a detached garage in the rear on, a south, on the southeast corner of Bel Air Drive and Spazier Avenue. And a permit to stucco the house in the garage was finaled uh, on February 24, 2010. There are no active building permits at this point in time. And this project is located in the El Miradero neighborhood. In terms of site planning, uh, there's not much change. You'll notice the existing house and detached garage are located on a relatively level corner lot. They are adding the addition to or legalizing the front um, porch and entry stairs that are north side. And there is a new 200 square, two, approximately 200 square foot addition to the rear of the garage that extends the building footprint towards the, the property line. Uh, the proposal appears to be consistent with the intent of the guidelines, but uh, there are conditions which I'll go into later on regarding the paving of the permeable surfaces and a, an issue with regards to the wood fence. Um, next would be mass and scale. Uh, again, this is a one-story structure they're adding to the front of the home. Um, the infill of the entry floor area does not really negatively change the house mass and scale, even though the original recessed entry would have been preferred. The proposed hip roof and area over the entry landing appears modest, somewhat proportionate and consistent with the house, and it does not alter the en front entry patterns in the neighborhood. The garage addition is behind it to the southeast and is not viewable from any public rights of way. So the mass and scale and height of the addition continue the design of the existing garage, except for its large square footage, and it, it is consistent with the neighboring corner lot garage patterns in the neighborhood. Last but not least, in terms of the design aspect for the project, um, 
The design of the floor area addition to the house and garage are consistent with the existing architecture. However, additional attention is needed to improve the proposed materials and their installation to enhance the quality of the design. Please note that the permit was finaled um, in 2010 for the stucco of the house and the garage and no other permits have been issued. So this is a legalization. Uh, the property, or I should say the applicant has met on a number of occasions with staff and so the original case planner is Chris Baxter, so forgive me if I'm missing any details here. But um, it's gotten to a point where many of the items have been addressed, yet there are a significant number of items that have yet to be dealt with and those are listed as conditions, as suggested conditions of approval. One would be to submit the cut sheet and construction details for the entry door and railings, the windows and the balcony doors for staff review. Two would be to use a wood railing material on the front entry stairs, which would be more consistent with the style of the home. Three would be to reduce the width of the new front entry stairs and walkway to be more appropriate for the modest scale home. Uh, number four would be to restudy the window material other than vinyl and their, as well as their style, proportion, pattern, and location. Staff recommends that windows be a block frame with wood sills and painted a mahogany color to match the house wood material. The two balcony doors at the second floor balcony should match the integrity of the windows. Number five would be to propose a 10 inch wood band between the basement and the first floor instead of the proposed stucco band. Number six would be to add foundation planting around the house as a screening technique for the basement, particularly the sides visible to Spazier Avenue. Number seven would be to change the garage door color from white to mahogany. Number eight would be to remove the new non-permeable concrete paving around the house and replace with drought tolerant plants and permeable surface materials. Permeable grout or sand materials should also be used for the entry walkway and any new patio areas. And all plants should be selected from the city's BeWaterWise.com plant list or should be approved by the Glendale Water and Power Department if not on the list. And that's in regards to, um, there's quite a bit of paving that has gone on recently in the rear. You'll notice that much of the rear yard has been paved and so there is that recommendation to remove much of that paving and replace with landscaping. Uh, number nine would be to remove the wood fence installed on top of the block boundary wall in the Spazier Avenue side setback area. There's an existing uh, block wall which is relatively old and there has been a suspension of code enforcement for existing block walls, but we do know, staff has noted that the wood on top of this existing block wall is relatively new and it needs to be removed. And last but not least, um, that to end all siding into the corners and or appropriate locations. So as conditions, um, staff believes the project can be supported. So also, um, this block wall you're showing in the photo here yes. has a wood fence on top. Has now has a wood fence. And you're saying the wood fence has to come down so it will look like this. Correct. But the block wall can remain. The block wall at this point in time can remain. There is a suspension of all code enforcement actions for existing block walls, such as the one shown. These these stairs on the front do not match the drawing width of the stair. Is he saying that he wants this to be brought down further, or that the, the stair on the plan should be brought down to the the stairs that are shown on the site plan? are the ones listed that should be reduced in width. Doesn't that look longer than these? That's like the width yeah, of the door. Fine. And this is like the width of the... Correct. Okay. So essentially, the width of the stairs shown on the site plan span that new front entryway. The volume of the entry extension exists, right? So they're adding the roof for the porch and then California get all along to the existing. The volume is there now, right? The front door is there now? The enclosed recessed area? Yeah. Yes. Right. They didn't now, right? okay. Correct. And so they're adding the, there's a new covered porch with a hip roof yeah. okay. that's being proposed. Which is not being shown in the north elevation, which is yeah, really the, the south elevation, <laughs> right? <laughs> it took me a while on that one. Yeah. So the north and south are flipped. Yeah. And the north, the old north, which is the south, isn't showing the new roof? 
for the patio. Essentially, uh, the north in, elevation is what exists. Right, and the <laughs> south elevation is what they're proposing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Odd, but true. With the band, the new stucco band around the house, which you're, which staff's recommending be wood. Is that correct? Yes, correct, from my understanding. I wouldn't want a band, but that's... No, <laughs> and all the windows appear to be white vinyl, or are they... That is correct. So there is staff recommending just the ones in the front be replaced with the wood sill and the, the block? The staff I is just um, say, stating, essentially, in the staff report, we study the window material other than vinyl and their style, proportions, patterns, and location. Um, okay. Typically, for such a home such as this, they would have had wood, um, right. wood, wood windows recessed and... Um, and again, uh, forgive me, since I'll look to Stephanie since I know that she was she sat in on the meetings, and I'm just <coughs> making the presentation for Chris Baxter right now. Perhaps she can shed a little more light on this. But typically, this would have had wood windows that were recessed, and based on the nail-in vinyl windows, those are typically not highly encouraged. And also the balcony doors in the rear. Um, there is a suggestion color? that the balcony doors on the rear, since they are visible from Spazier, match any. If if the windows are required to be brought up in terms of quality or material, that the doors match the updated windows. But the windows on that elevation aren't being recommended to be changed out on our drawings. Uh, according. To, I know I'm going to look to Stephanie, to Stephanie, so it would appear that any visible windows, visible that is from the street, from the street. would okay. be upgraded. Yeah, the challenge on this particular property is that so many of the windows are visible because it's a corner property. Right. Typically, staff focuses on the windows at the front, uh, and you know, and then that's the end of it. Uh, we have noticed that um, the board will look at it differently at times, and, and staff will look at it differently if it's such a prominent location as a corner site. We're trying to legalize these windows that are installed now. Well, we're trying. Staff is, has been working with the applicant to help them legalize this project, and, and also staff is recommending change modifying some of the things that have been done so that it could be consistent with what we would support and the design review board would support if no changes had previously been made to the project that's how we approach a legalization uh because we oh, I understand that. Yeah. i'm just asking are they proposing i we may propose something but i'm saying are they proposing changing any windows I don't believe so, no. Okay. They're proposing the project as is, okay. and uh, staff has provided a gotcha. okay. long list of recommendations. Can you, can you speak? So you were talking about going back to the house before these additions were put on illegally. Um, what Do we know what the house looked like before the illegal additions were added on? No. And and we're not recommending the house return to its right. previous condition. We're we're just um, concerned that the vinyl windows that have been installed are particularly out of character with even what's proposed on the the current project. Okay. Any more questions for staff? Okay. So I have uh, open the public discussion. Uh, Armic Shenazarians. Hi, my name is Armik Shanazarian with the AMAC Group. Um, so can you uh, just the, put it a little higher for you and then okay. state your address as well? 639 West Broadway, Glendale, California. Um, basically, the project, um, we inherited the project from different architects, so forgive us for the uh, the elevations, and uh, I think I know there's an error over there, but regardless, the project uh, originally had a composition shingle roof and the uh, owner of the property changed it, modified it to um, tiles. I think they used Malibu tiles on the roof. So if I could submit this, it would look 
then they uh, placed the Tuscany uh, series vinyl windows by uh, Melgard. So but basically what they're trying to do is try to maintain the windows if it's possible and try to uh, uh, basically um, do the addition um, of a cover patio which was uh, as we discussed with the staff and there was a recommendation to uh, do the porch in that area and uh, modify the entry the way it is and the owner of the property has spoken to all the neighbors within um, his block and a few blocks and provided me with this letter there's about 31 they said that they want us to wait to stay, but it's again under your discretion um, and they didn't want any changes to this project to be done but we told uh, I guess the owner told them that they're going to add a patio at the front uh, and then uh, just try to enclose that area and then try to legalize all the windows and whatever they had on the project. So here we are and uh, that's the basically the project. It's, it was a 58 square feet addition at the front which they enclosed and then proposing another 58 square feet of the porch area and then approximately 200 square feet of a uh, legalization of a garage that was added on to the property. If there's any questions or anything that I could... Questions? No. Nope. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, that's the only card I have, so I'll close the public discussion. And who wants to go first? Uh, I guess I'll go again. Um, what's really difficult about this project is that um, nothing that's proposed in general, in schematic, would have been denied if they had gone through the normal process. And some of the stuff that they proposed probably wouldn't have been allowed if they had gone through the normal process. So it's kind of the worst of all worlds, allowing stuff that wouldn't have been allowed to be approved now because they did it without a permit. And I understand the financial hardship on it, but that wasn't our issue, okay? Um, I know on my own cases in the city that they don't like you to do S-Tile, which they've done. And that may have been an issue, and they may not have done S-Tile. They may not have chosen to do that. So just on a personal note, I'm, I'm irritated by that because somebody did it without permit and then maybe get approved because they've done it without permit. So that's really annoying. And then the other factor was, you know, many times windows are upgraded to vinyl. So there's now no problem with vinyl windows. And, you know, it's just that they could have been done properly and with the proper uh, sizing and, and mullions and stuff like that. So while I feel for somebody uh, the hardship of having that, but it's really annoying to, in the worst of all worlds, they got materials that wouldn't have been uh, allowed with windows that wouldn't have been allowed, and now they get to have it because they didn't get it approved. I mean, it's like completely backwards. You know, it's, it's, it's really bad. So... Um, uh, it puts us in a bad position. I mean, I'd love to say, yeah, take the roof off, take all the windows out. And I'm inclined to say take all the windows out. The roof is a big option. I mean, I, I'm, I'm annoyed by that, and I'm not sure what to do, and I don't know what's fair on that, and I would love to hear from the rest of the board members. Um, I think there's some issues with the plan. I don't know if you had prepared it or not. I think in most scenarios when somebody comes in with a really nice set that's detailed well, I would feel comfortable passing it off to staff because I'm comfortable with what they presented and, and I could be confident that there would be a communication with staff that would be well. I don't have that comfort with this set. So even though it's relatively uh, simple things, I wouldn't be inclined to approve it at this time and wanted it to come back with further study and proper plans. Um, I would love to hear from the rest of the board to see what they feel about the roof, but I really think the windows need to be corrected because as a, re as a minimum, you know, I, I can't, I don't think it's fair to anybody else who goes through this process to have somebody go through the pro to not go through the process, get stuff that wouldn't be approved and then have it approved. I mean, that's, that's the worst possible thing to communicate. And uh, in terms of a couple of the corrections on the list, we can go down the list. Um, I mean, whatever we is on the list, I think is fine. I personally would rather see, since they've done the S-Tile and the sort of that Spanish option, to go ahead and not do that kind of banding and to do very nice... 
some type of window surrounds or at least a, a plaster sill or something or maybe a, a lintel piece or something to embellish the windows that were done. You know, do whatever you can to make it appear like it, it had been Spanish or uh, enforce that. That would also mean that probably the, the, the porch supports, again, would be more in keeping with a Spanish style. You might do something more like a heavy timber. A lot of times when you had a wood porch, you'd have like a 6x6 six six or an 8x8. Eight eight. A very simple detail. It might have a simple uh, uh, cap piece on it, you know, wood uh, heavy timber wood elements on it. So I would, I would encourage you to go in that direction. Um, I think wrought iron could happen. Um, on the front, possibly, although you have some wood on the back, on the back balcony, and I'd probably steer you maybe in that direction. I could be open you know, to discuss that. Um, the whole idea of that wood siding, again, I don't know what our, how much leeway we have to modify stuff that's already there, but, um, and, I, and I don't know if it's actually better if we take that siding off and it turns into plastic because it's a big blank wall around on the street, so... I don't know if that's actually better that that happens, that we change that existing siding to plaster. So I don't know the answer on that. I don't think they're recommending um, that. They're just, no, there's no, no, it was just the, it was just the siding, it was, a, it was the wood part on the wall. Yeah. There's a proposed 10-inch wood band between the, band. the basement and first floor instead of the proposed stucco band. Is that no, what I'm you're saying that there's that extension that's the closet. Yeah, it's, it's noted as kitchen, which would be a very narrow kitchen off the bedroom. It's actually the closet, if you look on the plan. Closet off the of bedroom one. That sticks into the side yard, street side yard. Right. If you look on the south elevation, you see it says siding now. I mean, in reality, I think it would be more consistent if that went to plaster, but then, you know, you have this big blank wall, so. But they're not maybe. recommending. I mean, I, I, in some ways, I'd rather see it go plaster, you know, and. Well, they're recommending that they add, end all siding into the corners and are appropriate locations. Right, but I'm saying if you, take, if you take the house oh. to a Spanish style. Oh, I see, and then take it down to stucco. Style. Okay. And then you would take it down to do stucco. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know, I don't know the okay. answer to that, but. Um, right. So that's what, that's what I would say. I would be inclined to have it come back to redesign, really kind of flesh out what's happening. I would, I, I think the windows have to be changed as a minimum just to, to get the sticking proper, because I don't think you can do the mullions on an existing window, especially that style, so I don't think that's even possible. So, I mean, unfortunately, it, we might have to buy the roofing, but I don't know how you guys feel about it. Okay. Uh, not to be redundant, uh, however, just like my colleague here, I, it, I know I'm not, I should not be addressing it to you personally, just like you said, you were not uh, the originator on this plan, you just inherited it. However, it does annoy me as well uh, when people, people think that they can just get away uh, and can put the board or the staff uh, in a situation where just because the design or the house is, has been built, we have to accept it. Uh, other than, or aside from that, uh, I too would like uh, I'm not sure now if these 10 recommendations will be sufficient or anything else we may add uh, eventually at the, at the end of this discussion tonight, but uh, I would like it to come back to the board for a, uh, a review uh, before a final uh, decision or final approval on this. Um, yeah, I think any time you have 10 conditions and one of them says restudy mm -hmm. that's um, kind of a red flag for me in terms of maybe this won't get approved <laughs> but uh, beyond that I mean I I guess I have the same feeling of you know it's it was done so do you say oh, okay well we'll just accept it and, and legalize it and slap on a couple more things to make it look better it's sort of a band-aid approach you know um, had it had it gone through the regular process like Mr. Gerger said, you know, a lot of these things wouldn't have been approved, they wouldn't have been allowed, and so then rather than spending the money and the time to put them in, and they would have just done something differently. And since we make everybody else in Glendale go through the same process, it's sort of a, in a difficult position where we really can't just say, oh, it's okay, just, you know, leave it and move on with your lives. Um, stick on a railing and call it a day. Uh, there 
to me, there are a lot of issues. I mean, part of the problem is it's a corner lot, so you have two sides to deal with, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I think the roof to me isn't as big of an issue because it sort of it looks substantial enough to be something that was done. It's not um, like an ad hoc, or it's kind of like it was done it's purposefully. It's a very personal thing trying to get S-Tile. <laughs> we never got S-Tile, that's why. It was, it was perfect. It's a very personal thing. Me, you don't really don't get S-Tile, that's the thing. <laughs> for me, the, the curb appeal of the, of the facades is more of an issue, and landscaping could help that. Um, but I, I, have a, I have a sort of an uncomfortable feeling about that patio, the, the porch area in the front. It's so close to the side, to spazier, and the stairs in the front are just so some nothing. They're just sort of like added on like they just needed a place to come down. And I would like to see that element be an entry, be designed, have a style to it, um, you know, Spanish style roof, go with Spanish style, have the, the larger timber posts to support a either a Spanish style roof, a wood roof, something that, something that comes off the house that says, I was always here, um, I have of like Spanish character, um, I think the wood is the right a way to go because of the siding. Uh, it's going to be more blending in with the house. It's a modest style house. I think wrought iron is maybe too ornate for this style, this the size of a house. And uh, I think the siding to me on the side, you know, it's, it's a nice element. I think it it sort of t got, start, starts to guide you in a in material selection. So going with that color palette, I think that the staff's recommendations to use a mahogany trims on the wind. Um, mahogany color on the garage door to maybe incorporate that color palette into the balcony in the back because you can see it, um, you know, keep it, keeping it consistent. So they're all stained this dark color. It looks like they all belong together. And, you know, the windows, white windows, it's really hard for me to get on board with. <laughs> and the fact that they're vinyl and they're flush with the, with the finished surface, it really just stands out like these were added on and we didn't put much, much thought into it. So I think for me that if I'm not considering financial hardships and you know the time and effort and all the stuff that you, you really put your, put your heart into, it, it's like, oh, well, I feel so bad for the applicant because they're going to have to rip these out, redo the whole thing. But that's what the house really wants to look like, is to have that slight recess, um, you know, uh, a sill kind of trim around it. And, it, and nothing nothing ornate, just something modest that keeps with the style of, of the of the Spanish-style house in the neighborhood. And, um, yeah, I think the brown would be a nice color to, to tie it in with the rest of the interior. Um, Landscape-wise, I think you could probably, on space here, do a landscape, uh, like a shrub palette in the bottom below the windows to kind of just dress up that wall. I don't think the stucco band is necessary. It will break up the house too much. Um, I think in the front of the, the front elevation, which is on that grassy area, uh, like front lawn, I just I want something to happen there. It, it just feels like this patio got pushed out and it's, you're going to fall off of it. And there's... It, <laughs> I just don't know how, how much extent we say add this, add that, add that. I think a good landscape plan could alleviate a lot of the problems. Um, I, uh, I don't remember seeing one in here. <laughs> ah, existing landscape to, re to remain. So I think, yeah, um, more accurate drawings and landscape plans that address the foundation of the house. Um, and to the point of the backyard, I, I obviously couldn't see the backyard. I guess staff saying that it's all concrete. Um, I, I guess we have purview over that, even though we can't see it from the street. Um, and yeah, I would agree with staff's recommendation to add more planting areas, more impervious paving areas. And I would think that the, it would actually better be better for the applicant because you'd have more space outside and less uh, reflective surfaces and heat gain. So. I cover all the <laughs> points. Okay. Um, this has been a challenging project for us uh, in the same ways that you are experiencing the, the kind of challenge. Um, so 
I just have a few questions just to clarify the intent of some of your comments. Um, what, what we're hearing a little bit is that if that it looks like because of the S tile that all of the other parts of the design should be shifted over to a Spanish style house. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if there's an option to remove and replace the S tile because the the house I think originally was not a Spanish style house, it was more of a minimal traditional and personally I think that it may be a challenge for the applicant to modify it to look like a Spanish house in the way that you would, that would meet the the standards of the design review board. So I'm wondering if we could provide the applicant a choice with, you know, and we'll include uh, some of the co very specific comments that you've made because we appreciate those and they're very helpful to us. But maybe as the broader umbrella comment at the top of our record of decision, we would say something like, if, this, if the S-tile roof is to remain, the house should be detailed so that it looks like a Spanish style house and from that these details would follow the windows would be recessed the details would be correct there would be heavy timber on the porches uh, and all of the the great comments that you've made I've tried to take as many of them down as I can um, if the the S tile were to be replaced with say asphalt shingle or Con flat concrete tile, then the house could potentially move more towards a minimal traditional style. And then the question would be, because um, I, I guess that's where staff thought the direction would go, because it's easier to mold what's out there to maintain its minimal traditional style. So the question would be, would most of the conditions that staff has outlined um, potentially remain in place? Because I think those might lead to the kind of minimal traditional house where you've got this 10-inch wood band, you maintain the siding, um, you still look at the windows again and make them appropriate, but potentially you could either change out all the windows or provide a trim around them to make them fit. Um, so that's a question to the to the board because it does sound like this is a return for redesign, and we want to. It, it has been a challenge to work with the applicant for the variety of conditions that you talked about. So uh, we would like to have the best direction of the board so that we can move this through because this has been a long process already. Well, I think if you go with the, the ranch, the minimalists, uh, then the door is out of place because the door is a very ornate Spanish, almost Spanish, kind of almost, I don't know, how do you call it, Mediterranean style door. Do you then take that down to a simple door? It's like, like you know, pick your battle, like what, what is it supposed to look like, and then make everything follow that style. So keep the white windows, change the color scheme of the house to match the white window, but also matching the shingles and the wood trim, and then change the door so it's simple and more of like a, a modern house or a ranch-style house. And then you can have a porch that's more modest in scale and size, because then you're talking about something that's in that style of vernacular. Or do you stick with the Spanish tile roof and the door and change out the windows and keep it more in the heavy, woodsy style, the Spanish style with those kind of trim details? You know, and the porch is more of a heavier, substantial thing. Either way, you're going to have a large amount of work to do. <laughs> and I think for me, that's where if the applicant just picks something and then figures out what what's most economical to change, I really don't have a preference. It could be one or the other or I think the some other. I think the option's good. I think the option's good. Yeah. Because I absolutely think if they 
if they took the S tile off and they did a comp shingle roof and they probably fixed maybe a third of the windows, they could probably stay without millions. There's a couple of them I think they're just wrong, you know, if they redone redid those. I, I would be comfortable with something that had didn't have mullions, which means they could keep a majority of the windows. But I think if the roof went to a comp, then you'd probably be doing less windows to correct, and then you would do trims on those. You could keep it stucco. You could keep the wood siding and go with, obviously, a lighter porch. I would be in favor of that. I think those are two viable options, absolutely. absolutely. And the planting would also enhance that vernacular, whatever one they pick. So in any case, we would have the planting comments that you've mentioned. Uh, I think so far what we have as far as the planting comments is more shrub planting around the foundations. Um, that's the only comment that I got in particular to the planting and adding more landscape area where they're showing concrete in the back. In the back. Mm -hmm. So those are the landscape uh, landscape comments. Well, an accurately drawn landscape plan. And floor plan. And floor plan. And elevations. And if there are window details that they're provided. Okay. So uh, provide window details. You mentioned that even if the house were to maintain its sort of minimal traditional quality, uh, which are the windows that are particularly troubling? since you seem to have a clear uh, idea. I think the ones on the west elevation, I don't think that is appropriate to the room inside. But it's also, I, I mean, it doesn't look bad on this drawing, mm -hmm. but I think it looks bad in the, in reality, the picture. So the, yeah. The so that should be a larger. Either larger or routine. something. I just, I think the way the window is constructed looks funny. I mean, just in general. Okay. But in but if it went the minimal, minimal uh, traditional, and it had a calm shingle roof, you could probably live with a majority of these windows, and but with a wood surrounds. Okay. So I think that would be possible. Yeah, and the front door might just be enough if it rather than being wood, you know, you might paint it. it might be a painted door, and it might be salvageable. Same so the, door but painted. The, the same door but painted? painted possibly. So there's glass and I think. I mean, and then the glass. Pretty I mean, ornate might just door. A pretty ornate door. So we're hearing a contradiction or a little An bit? Openness. An openness. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so since it sounds like it's a return for redesign, we'll leave it, um, change, out, change out the door or paint it out in some way. Out the center part and stick in a glass. Make it yeah. minimalist. <laughs> Keep the frame, keep the side lights, but just take out all that ornate glass and put it in a Possibly. plate glass or double, what do you call it, tempered I mean, glass. I, I would be open to that. I think a lot of it is that it, it has that kind of woodsy look. I mean, a, the wood feel, the heavy, deep wood, which lends itself towards the Spanish. Right. Okay, so the other, the other direction is to add a, a substantial porch with wood railing. I would even say like, a, so you have like the, the six by six beams and the big header and... Yeah. Like pilasters at the bottom, or yeah, and then you'd have um, the windows would go into the recessed with the wood sills and or plaster brown, sill or plaster sill. Okay. 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 So since this is a return for redesign, um, we have the intent of the options, either maintain the roof and go with a Spanish look with heavy wood details and we'll include some of the specific comments, enlarge the porch, uh, use those heavy wood details as well. Uh, in either case, the landscape, uh, the landscape comments stand. Um, the other option is to maintain a minimal traditional look and replace the roof with comp shingle or concrete tile. And so the landscape, you know, it's just, I'm saying it's vernac stay with the vernacular. So if you're doing a Spanish Mediterranean style house, you wouldn't pick boxwood hedges. You would pick um, more Mediterranean style planting materials, grasses, a little more. 
So complement whatever style it <laughs> right. is with the landscape if design. If they go modernist, you know, they're gonna, they can do something very simple, just green hedges, flowers, you know, more of a country garden. I mean, whatever it is they want to pick, the style they pick, it would match the style of the house. Okay. But the foundation paintings. <laughs> Uh, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to return for redesign with the uh, comments noted. I have a motion by Board Member Garagos. Is there a second? Second. Board Member Karoglian. And roll call, Board Member Garagos? Yes. Board Member Karoglian? Yes. Chair Pro Tem Sakai? Yes. Motion passes 3-0. Okay, now we have minutes. And then we do have minutes. From March the 29th, and all board members were present. Anyone have any corrections to them? <laughs> what? Oh, I know. I, I forgot where I am right now. Yeah. <laughs> I was here. I can yeah. Well, you can take up a few minutes to read it. <laughs> of course. I'll make a motion. For some reason, I can't get this one in my head. Which one was this? Um, unfortunately, I it was Roger Kiesel who was that. For some reason, I can't remember. The shortest meeting so far, Boston? 25 minutes. I know. <laughs> I just can't remember what it was. Oh. I think it's lovely. Whatever. Yeah. It was lovely. I just I don't remember. I remember the comments. And only two recommendations, I, I believe. Yeah. I think it's. I will second whoever's. <laughs> 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 I have a motion to approve the minutes of March 29th yes. uh, by Board it. Member Caroglian and a second by Board Member Garagos. Uh, Board Member Garagos? Yes. Board Member Caroglian? Yes. Chair Pro Tem? <laughs> yes. Sakai? <laughs> motion passes to approve the minutes as noted. And is there a motion to adjourn at 8 p.m.? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. 